See the chat's flowing pretty good. I did a little slight audio adjustment. Let me know if you can hear me pretty good because I'm not talking loud. <clears throat> Nancy Puffins, that's fast. Thank you. All right, Shiva. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Things look really good. Hi, Jim Bogler. Wildwoods. A lot of a lot of people, a lot of familiar people. Guys, we're getting newer and newer people in. And you know, uh, I've all ever since I had just two or three hundred subscribers, many of you are still with me today. You know I run a tight ship. I got zero tolerance for BS. And that attitude has re has really guaranteed that a higher quality of people stay with the channel. And we, we have old people. Well, the majority of people in archaics are over average intelligence. You've already been through the BS. You've already seen all, uh, a whole lot of the material that's out there. And you're able to separate fact from fiction. And you didn't need my help doing it. You just naturally gravitated to my channel and, and, and become exposed to hardcore data that you have to wrap your you have to wrap your mind around. It's not something easily processed. So, after spending three and a half years teaching you guys about the Phoenix phenomenon, something absolutely new brought to the table by me by virtue of many years of research in a prison cell, seeing history not as it was taught to me at the collegiate level, not as it was taught to me at the high school level. I missed all that. I missed every bit of it. My, my education was eighth grade before I ran away from home. And then I, I was two years on the streets before I got in a lot of trouble when I was 17 years old. I went to prison. I'm entirely 100% autodidactic. I am self-educated. And my education began long before I was incarcerated. It began because my mother is is just a real, real puritanical Southern Baptist. She's uh, from a very small town, has very small... Uh, very, her world is very small. Even today it is. And um, uh, she had a zero tolerance, no backup attitude. But hers was hers was from a puritanical religious standpoint. But, but she made me read. I used to get in trouble as a kid all the time. My punishment was to go to the library and read books that she chose for me. And in exchange, my reward was once I read the book that she chose for me, I had to read. I, I could freely read it one book that I wanted to read. So my childhood, long before I, I got in trouble at 15, had already been immersed in in the literary world. So I'm saying all that to say this. You're going to hear things in this video, more material on the Phoenix phenomenon, but we're only focusing on one year. I don't need to focus on Mark Higgs veterans already know the amount of data. And if you don't, there's plenty more in Chronicon you haven't seen. But the amount of data for the year 4309 BC, the Adam and Eve reset, uh, total Genesis reset of 3895 BC, which started 1656 years, which I'm now finding was punctuated by other Phoenix uh, um, episodes during that period. But the terrible one was 2239 BC. We know that as the great flood of Genesis. We also know, know it as the day the sky fell, the collapse of the vapor canopy. The Phoenix phenomenon throughout the historical record is, is it has the same themes Phoenix in the ancient mythological traditions was was basically interchangeable with Vulcan, and Vulcan is where we get our volcanoes from. This uh, Phoenix and Vulcan make their appearances all throughout. Every time there's a major Phoenix event occurs, it's always with volcanoes, the sun going dark, red dust and red mud, and and. We have our geologists or the uniformitarians, and we have we have people who really think that their their education gives them the right to impose their the belief upon a a whole historical series of data sets for which they've had they've had no contact. I get this all the time. I get emails from people all the time that tell me, "Oh man, the sun the sun merely darkens because it was a volcano," or. Uh, or the red dust and red mud and red rains that fall over the world. It's just atmospheric fallout. It's sand from the Sahara Desert. This has been proven all the way since, guess guess what year they quote me all the time? 
oh, ever since 1902, they've been telling us it's Sahara. We knew that back in 1902. Yeah, white sand from the Sahara causes red dust to fall over the world. So we're going to address these in this video. I'm, I'm already anticipating this video to be three hours. I'm already in. I even have a special video set aside that's a minute and 35 seconds, a black and white reel from 1902 that I'm going to play sometime later in this video when this coffee catches up to me because I'm going to take me a little bathroom break. Anyway, um, <clears throat> like I said, this, this video is going to be absolutely packed. That's why I started out the gate. No announcements, no nothing. Straight into the video. This is what we got to do today. We have a lot of ground to cover. Uh, it took me three videos just to convey to you guys the amount of information that I bring to the table just on the Ogaijian deluge. Yeah, that was amazing. What was it, three videos or five videos? It was huge, huge, huge amount of, of, of data. I think it was five videos. Just on the flood of Ogaijis, part one through five. And, of course, the Phoenix videos. At one time, the Phoenix videos got up to 80-something videos before I montaged all the smaller videos into two-hour presentations. So, actually, you're looking at over 100 Phoenix videos when you go to the Phoenix playlist. But we're going to ignore all that. We don't even we don't have to go through. I mean, I got them in my head. We do not have to go through uh, the dates that I just gave you. We don't have to go through 1963 BC, 1825 BC. We don't have to go even further down to 1687 BC, uh, and, and then after that, 1549 BC. We have Phoenix. We have Phoenix episodes for every one of these, and they're all divisible by 138. 138 years later was 1411 BC. We've covered that too, and we're going to cover it some more. <clears throat> and then after that was 1273 BC. After that was 1135 BC. That was when Atlantis was destroyed and the complete silence ever after of the Sea People's Federation. That started the Great Mediterranean Dark Age. So we had we had this pattern. We already know it. We've already established it on this channel. It's every 138 years, this phenomenon occurs, but it occurs at different degrees of magnitude. Sometimes it's regional. It's, it's highly localized. Other times it's hemispheric. Four times so far, it's been worldwide. So 1902, I'm going to show you on these charts real, real quick. So you'll have a, a good understanding because a lot of people ask me, how come 1902. You, you say 1902 was this and that. I don't, I don't see any evidence of it. Well, you're not really supposed to. I'm going to show you why. There's been a lot of scrubbing about what happened. What I'm going to show you is from cultural, scientific, atmosphere, atmospheric, uh, geological, um, traditional, all um, commercial. I'm about to show you all kinds of things about 1902 you've never heard of. Because I never put it all together in one video. And I still don't have it all together. But it's okay. This is enough to fill three hours easily. All right. So <clears throat> let me find. Because I got so much, so much going on. We know. Oh, my God. Just when you think you got everything totally organized. All right. Let me see here. So, I don't know what I did with that file. I have so many files here. I'm not as organized as Martin Leakey. But real quick, while I'm getting this file, you guys know the Phoenix phenomenon is volcanoes. This is the key deal. Earthquakes are happening all the time. Volcanoes are the key here with the Phoenix phenomenon. Red dust, red, may, red rain, red mud, weird stuff. The sky, the moon, the sun and the moon turning red. The sun going dark, also attended by earthquakes. Also, the Phoenix phenomenon is known for the appearance of a new star. It's always red. It's a red star that appears in the sky, and it's very noticeable. These incidents happen when there, oh, 
When these incidents happen, there are changes of government that are inexplicable. In China, it's called the mandate of heaven. The mandate of heaven changes. Um, it was so dire and important to Chinese astronomers because for a long time, over, over maybe 2,000 years or so, it was a tradition in China to execute the astronomers and sky watchers who did not predict the darkening of the sun. Yeah. It's a, and when the sun did darken, it was a, it was called the mandate of heaven change. And the emperor had to step down and somebody else had to come in and rule. This is the ancient tradition. They didn't always do that, which started to, which, which led to civil wars and stuff like that. So this video here, the information that's packed into this video is why I can't take Fomenko seriously. It's why I can't take anybody who says there's a missing thousand years seriously. You have a lot to bring to the table to prove that in light of all the chronological data and all the patterns that I found. I can't take the millennial rain theory uh, seriously either. There's a lot of people out there pushing this all over, all over, all over uh, YouTube right now about uh, uh, Jesus Christ has already come back and, and this is after the this is this is after the millennial rain and something about this is the the season of Satan. I don't know. It's all I, I don't know. But Jesus was never a physical person to me. It was a 100% spiritual story, so I don't buy into that anyway. But when it comes to chronology, we're gonna nail we're gonna nail that coffin shut in this video, with 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 um, with material chronological material. It's it, it's it's irrefutable. It's a uh, it's it's amazing what I'm about to present. So I don't buy into that crap about the Book of Revelation is already fulfilled in ancient time. No, I told you. We're on a loop. So in technically it has been fulfilled multiple times and we've lived through it, but we're heading right into it right now. We are about to experience worldwide the breaking of the second seal. And the actual year, 50, 5918, will begin in about two weeks, I believe. Yeah. 5918 starts our, our true 2024. Technically, we're still in the year 2023. All in, That's all for other videos. So <clears throat> I'm going to look real quick to see what I did with this. Always something. It was a chart I wanted to show. Oh, I know where it's at. I know where it's at. We'll start with this. Start with this little chart here. Hmm. All right, I'm going to present. You guys know I got to talk out loud to do this stuff. All right, present. I'm going to share my screen. All right. I know you guys can see this. I've shared this many times. We're not going to go into the details. This is the Phoenix phenomenon as it existed in uh, July 5th, 2014. If you look at the bottom, there's a date. My name in July, July 5th, 2014. This is the state of my knowledge on the Phoenix phenomenon and the 138 year periodicity appearance and what happened. I even have a legend on the side explaining each one. This is in 2014. This chart, this chart is nothing compared to what I have now. But I'm showing you the, the development of this of this uh of this knowledge. It's showing you. Here's 1902, far on the right. 1764, 1902, 2040. They're all 130 years apart. Do you see these big black black spheres right here? These right here. These right here are 552 years apart. These are the ones we need to take. These are the ones that affect the entire world right here. They're seen. This is when the Phoenix phenomenon is seen all over the entire world. Here's another old, here's another older chart, 21 appearances. It, I've filled in a lot of these though since then. This is just an old, older chart. This is the Great Pyramid. Now we're not, we're not going to get into the Great Pyramid on this deal, but I need to show so to remind you the Great Pyramid is patterned in rectilinear distances in its interior measurements, and they're divisible by 138, sometimes by 552. 
which is the Phoenix, the Phoenix uh, cycle. But 138, we find the number 138 everywhere inside the Great Pyramid, and it uh, until and it hasn't been been sufficiently explained. I have several videos that show this, so we're not going into it. But these are just different ways you can get Phoenix numbers out of the measurements that are in the the, the Great Pyramid. There's a bunch of them. All the every single number you see here boxed up is divisible by 138, and no one uh, no one who publishes about the Great Pyramid has yet explained this phenomenon and why. Even the 1656 right here, from the base of the monument, the base being year one, the base of the monument to the bottom of the great slab under the king's chamber is 1,656 pyramid inches, just like the great flood was 1,656 years. I'm just reminding you, that's not the subject matter of this video. Here's the three books about the phoenix. When the Sun Darkens, Nostradamus and the Plants of Apocalypse, which is right here, and we're going to need to look at something Nostradamus said. Uh, but also, Shocking Secrets of Antiquity. This is available on Amazon. My publisher is going to release it later. This is self-published by me. It's huge. Huge. All right. Now, these three books show you that the history of the world is punctuated in 138 year intervals. And that, and that basically the same thing is happening. It's just happening to different parts of the world every 138 years. All right, same, same principle there. This is one of my very first videos on 1902, the forgotten dark age. I'm gonna play you a clip because there's no, there's no sense in me reiterating all these things that happened all around the world when I when I so succinctly just summed it up right here. And we're just going to add to it. So I'm going to play you a clip from this video. I'm going to play you another clip from this video, 1902, The Hidden Reset. But we have a lot of data to add to this as well. This, is a, this was my third 1902 video showing all the mathematical patterns, uh, how it's... How, it's just more evidence to me that we live in a, in a controlled construct and that none of this happened naturally. So here's a here's a here's a more sophisticated Phoenix chart here. Right here. Names of the Phoenix in history are Fien, Feng in China, Fink of the Druids, Noth, which is the reverse of Noth of, of the Egyptians. Remember, the Egyptians had backwards with what the rest of the world had forward. And this and this is because of the translation of languages that were that were written from right to left and those from left to right. This is why the uh, ancient goddess, uh, Egyptian goddess Neith in Greece was called Athene. You remember, remember, the ancient Greeks came out of Egypt, northern Egypt. But uh, it's Noth, Typhon, it's also Typhonius, uh, Fenrir, Fenris, the Doom Shape, Angel of Death, Neph, all these are, all these, and also Vulcan, all these are uh, names of the, of the Phoenix. But the most ancient names of the Phoenix are the ones found in the Sumerian text, the Pen Deity, the Pen God, it's P-N. But uh, yeah, we have a lot here. Every single date here is on the 138 year timeline. You see here, we got 1764, right here. That's 138 years before 1902. It's very relevant to what we're about, we're about to discuss. 138 years later after 1902 is 2040. So we find it's in the middle. It's in the isometric epicenter between two equidistant dates. Remember I said that because you have another video clip in here that I'm going to show you that shows absolutely that 1902 is the exact year and that we are we are precisely on time and the calendar has not changed. Phoenix is the keeper of the calendar. And in this video is going to show you an isometric pattern that unfolds with 1902 that is amazing. So that's all. Now this, this chart here is very important to you because it shows you why nothing truly worldwide cataclysmic happened in 1902. Here's the chart. This shows you the cycle of Phoenix cycles. A Phoenix cycle is 552 years. Three Phoenix cycles is 1656 years. Remember, we had Rashi a thousand years ago said that the world, the world history is divided between destructions and those destructions are every 1656 years. He said that. So, 1656 is the number of years in the pre-flood world between the Adam and Eve cataclysmic reset and the great flood reset of Noah. 
So here it is. This is this is the geometrical calendrical patterning that explains why 3895 BC right here. It explains why 2239 BC right here. It explains why 1687 BC, the Ogaiji and the Luz right here, were, were the, the most terrible cataclysms in recorded history. Then, right on schedule in 31 BC, we had a lot. My Chronicon shows you a lot. Great fiery dragon seen in the sky over Egypt during the Battle of Actium, the worst earthquake that ever afflicted uh, uh, Judea and Jerusalem and all of Olympia and Greece. And the Olmec civilization was completely wiped out. The, the ruin in the Americas was the worst, especially Guatemala, which we'll be talking about for 1902. So, uh, again, the next one, the next terrible one was 522 A.D., the Roman Catholic Church and the, and the establishment has done a great job. I have videos about this, has done a great job trying to cover it up, but they didn't do too good of a job because I found a couple books that talk about the cover up. And they even say that the Roman Catholic Church altered the calendar in 526 AD, creating our modern AD calendar to hide the Phoenix cycle of 552 years. That's not Jason telling you this. I found these references and I've showed them on YouTube. This is why 1902 was never the big one. Also, this is why with, with, with great certainty, I've told you guys many times, don't worry about 2040. 2046 is terrible, but that's for totally different reasons. It's for a totally different calendrical geometry involving a totally different object. But as far as the Phoenix phenomenon is concerned, 2040 is the sixth seal of the apocalypse. It is when the sun goes black as sackcloth, the moon turns red as blood, stars fall from the sky like 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 uh, figs cast ca uh, cast off in a wind. Uh, people hide in the, in the caves and the mountains from the face of God, and the whole world experiences an earthquake. This is 2040, but there's the survival rate is very very high. Here it is. This is what's coming. So 1902 is on this bottom tier. But that doesn't mean we don't have an overwhelming amount of evidence that the Phoenix phenomenon was here and documented because we do. That's what this video is about. So this chart here shows you the geometry and how it works, why some are worse. They're attached to the Phoenix cycle of 552 years. These are the sun ages of the ancient American calendars that were so feared. Every time the sun died, so did the world. The world was reborn. This is where the Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent, uh, 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 came into play. And this was the return of the feathered serpent each time. And it brought both good and evil. It's the same thing as the phoenix. It comes and destroys a part of the world, but it gives birth to new worlds. And this is what we're going to find in 1902, because the phoenix destroyed a lot. But it also gave rise and birthed a whole new echelon of so many things that you and I take for granted today that were did not exist in 1901. I'm going to repeat that. In this video, I am going to list probably close to 100 things that did not exist in 1901. But in 1902, all of a sudden, they all exist. And they're all experienced by you on a weekly and daily basis. These are common household and common cultural items around us everywhere. And, and, they, were, and they were introduced into our world on a Phoenix year. So let's get to it. I think that's a lot. No, there's a little, here's another Phoenix chart. Just more, more, more information, more patterns. They get more and more sophisticated as we get more and more data. There's a legend at the top. All right, there's another one with all showing all kinds of geometrical patterns in history. Another Phoenix chart. All right, that's the last of them. I'm done with the Phoenix charts. Now we can move on. Let me check my chat. See how I'm running my mouth. Oh, thank you, Pamela, for posting that. see here. All right, we're good. Don't get me wrong. What you're going to hear about what happened in 19, 1902 was terrible. 
was terrible. In 2040, it's going to be worse, but it's highly localized. That's what you have to understand. All right, so I don't, I don't know what you mean, Rick Thomas. Jason, what book was that that had the times in it for the different years? I have so many books in my library right now that talk about all the different calendars, different different years. My own published books talk about all that. I don't really know. You need to be more specific. All right. Let's do it. This is going to be amazing. This is going to be amazing data. I smell like tank. I ain't showered since I've been wrestling my dog this morning. I smell like tank. He's a big old Rottweiler. He likes he like he likes being rough. He likes being roughed up. It's all good until he slobbers on me. All right, let's see. Now, in this analysis, you have to in this analysis be patient. The picture begins to build. Not one single isolated data point can make a case. That's not how this works. That's not how anything works. But I'm going to overwhelm you with so many things that just suddenly happened and suddenly appeared in 1901, 1902, that after a while, you're not going to have to suspend your disbelief. You're not going to have to do your, your it's, it's your, your mind is going to either have to wrap around this or you're just going to get off the video and go find something else to do because you can't process this. This is where we're going with this. So, all right. 1901 is where our story begins, which is interesting because 1901 was singled out. 1901 was singled out by, by Edgar Casey as well. And Edgar Casey has a little bit, he, he has a story. We have a little story to tell about Edgar Casey here. And we'll get to that. So let me share my, I don't have, I don't need to share my screen for anything, do I? No. Good. All right, let's go. Let's see here. So it's very curious to me that in 1901 was the first year that the U.S. government finally established a scientific cabinet to begin recording the regularity of natural disasters. Why did they wait till 1901 to start recording natural disasters when the 1800s was absolutely packed full of all kinds of very highly local terrible events? Yeah, this whole shelf back here, I got a whole shelf, the, all these books right here, all these are all books. Here's Galveston, 1900, Hurricane Galveston. The 1800, all the events of the 1800s that, that uh, uh, all the, all, in the 1800, all the disasters. This right here, the San Francisco Horror. Now, this is, these books are all well over 100 years old. All these books right here. Let's see. What is this? This is, uh, oh, this is the Morris story of the Great Earthquake of 1908. 1897, the Columbian Exposi uh, uh, Exposition, 1893, and how, how it was destroyed. All right. The girl, here's, another, here's a different book on the San Francisco Horror. Here's a different book on the San Francisco Horror. All oh, these are 1906. So, all right. Now, I'm going to be reading from you, from three books, right here. I'm going to read from you from these three books. All three of these books were published in 1902 because the publishers were trying to get this out to the American people as fast as possible. The events that happened in 1902 happened rapidly, and they are, here's my word, they are harrowing. People... People could not believe what had happened. I'm also going to tell you now, a lot of this information in this video comes from these three books, all 122 years old. This is In the Shadow of Death, Martinique. This book was published in 1902. This is an original edition. 
This book was published in 1902. This is original edition. It's about it's about two different volcanoes in 1902. This one is terrible. It was published in 1902. I'm taking data out of all three of these books today. Let me tell you something. What happened sucked. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. It sucked. So in 1901, the U.S. government suddenly begins a scientific cabinet that's sole duty is to begin recording the regularity of natural disasters. They did this right before 1902. 1901, the U.S. government, U.S. President William McKinley is assassinated and is succeeded by Theodore Roosevelt. Now, I'm not going into these details. I'm just going to tell you on the surface right now, if you want to know more about this history, you need to go to Archaics TV and look at my Hats Off series. But just for YouTube, it's safe enough on YouTube for me to talk about, listen, most people don't know, but the United States has been a captured operation since the year 1902. 1901, the last true American president was assassinated, William McKinley. Every single American president since then has been working for the Bolsheviks, 100%. It was a Jewish takeover of the United States of America, and it's in full effect. Right after that, they took the Federal Reserve. Right after that, they went off. They went up and funded World War One. They funded World War Two, Nuremberg trials. They funded the Vietnam War. Listen, my guys, it goes deep. It goes deep, but it's not the subject matter of this video. This video is just showing you that just like in ancient times when the phoenix appeared, the mandate of heaven changed and rulership of the world was given to another people, it was given to a different, a different family of the elite. This is what happened in 1902. And in order for that to have, to, to have been a smooth transition, they had to get rid of William McKinley. And they did it really dastardly too. Two gunshots to the stomach and one in the groin. They made sure he died. He died a few days later. But William McKinley was the last true autonomous United States president. So as soon as soon as he was gone, Theodore Roosevelt. And anybody doesn't know, if you don't know the pedigree of Theodore Roosevelt, you need to go to Arcade TV. So <clears throat> here's the real, real sinister. The real sinister thing about this is that as soon as William McKinley is removed, the new U.S. president enacts the U.S. Treasury Department's Secret Service to now begin providing presidential protection because President McKinley was shot. So the perpetrators that killed the true president now create a secret service to protect themselves. Wow. Wow. And it all came. And it all came to pass in 1902. Massive power shift. So, nineteen oh one, new inventions of the modern age. Suddenly, in nineteen oh one, the assembly line is invented by Ransom Eli Olds in making the curved dash Oldsmobile. Now. Don't get this confused. A lot of you want to point toward toward uh, uh, Henry Ford as, as creating the assembly line, and it's not true. Oldsmobile, Eli Olds created the assembly line, but the difference was was the Oldsmobile line was a fixed line, and humans moved along the line to build to build the cars. Henry Ford changed it up on, to a conveyor belt system where humans work stations and the, and the, and, and, and the pieces that came came to them to, to work on. A significant difference here. He improved a system that was actually created in 1901. So also in 1901, something that you're all familiar with, fluorescent lighting was invented by the American Peter Cooper Hewitt. We've all heard of Hewitt. The name Hewitt's on our washers, dryers, on our on our vacuums, we got Hewitt on our generators, we got Hewitt everywhere. Uh, it was called a mercury vapor lamp. 1901, instant coffee is invented. Powdered coffee is invented. And then man, and then they begin to manufacture it immediately in 1902. 
instant coffee. It's crazy. It was invented by a Japanese-American chemist, Satori Kato of Chicago. In 1901, Hans Bellamy is born. Why is that necessary? Why is that interesting? Mar Keg's veterans know the name Bellamy. Hans Bellamy, his fascinating works were all Phoenix related, and he never even knew anything about the Phoenix. He documents all these cataclysms, all these changes in calendars. He's he's amazing, Hans Bellamy, but not once does he mention the Phoenix. He had no idea that what he was documenting was an actual phenomenon that could be dated with predictive value. So he wrote books called uh, Moons, Myths, and Man, the Book of Revelation History, uh, Built Before the Flood. He wrote a book called In the Beginning. He wrote another book called The Atlantis Myth. In The Atlantis Myth, he explains the cosmic causes of the Great Flood and even calculates that the Maya were familiar with a 2,760-year cycle. 2,000. 760 years is perfectly divisible by 138. It's also exactly five Phoenix cycles of 552 years. Hans Bellamy, Hans Bellamy seems to have been born right at the right time to, 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 just, be, to just be saturated with all this Phoenix data because that's what he did. He spent his life writing all these books about the Phoenix phenomenon without ever mentioning the Phoenix. 1901, in the month of May, Gulf Oil is founded. Thank you, Delta Don. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, 1901 is also noted. Not one single volcano erupted in 1901. Oh, in 1903, there's only one documented volcano, but it was under the ice in Iceland. Not much is known about it, and it was a small eruption. That was in 1903. 1902 is a different story. So, with 1901, I'm going to play you this little video real quick. Because we're going to move right along. I told you guys, be patient. This is a three-hour presentation, no doubt. All right, so... I'm going to stop that screen, present video file. Let's see here. February 22nd, 1901, a new star appeared in the heavens in the Perseus constellation, seen by Americans, Europeans, and as far as Kiev in Russia, all Northern Hemisphere. Astronomers asserted that a spectrographic analysis revealed that this new star to be 300 light years away, and the newspapers picked up the story. But to the embarrassment of the astronomers, the newly appeared celestial body shot out nebulous rings that moved at a rate of two and three seconds of arc a day. This far exceeded the speed of light, demonstrating that the object was much closer to the Earth than the astronomers had believed. In his book, New Lands, Charles Fort wrote, when the new star in Perseus appeared in February 1901, it was just a point of light. Something went out from it, giving it six months of a diameter equal to half of the apparent diameter of the moon. The appearances looked structural. Fort believed the dusts of 1901 and 1902 that fell on Earth from space came upon this object, came from this object. He knows that Three years earlier, Dr. Epson, on January 16, 1898, observed something that looked like a cloud in the constellation Perseus. Dr. Epson wrote, whatever it was, it had the peculiar property of dimming and blotting out the stars. It moved into Perseus, and then it moved away. On March 10, 1901, only 16 days after the appearance of this object in the sky, a great amount of red dust fell from the sky on Sicily, Tunis, Italy, Germany, and Russia. A thick orange-red stain was reported from Ongar, Essex, England. In Austria, while the dust fell, the earth quaked. On March 11th, as dust rained on Tunis, earthquakes afflicted Algeria. On March 12th, ashes fell from the sky at Avellino, Italy. A new star in Perseus. Dust reigns on the earth. Academia is quiet. There is a mention here of Avellino in Italy. 
for those who don't know, in 1687 BC, a ma- a massive amount of Italy was totally buried around Vesuvius. Herculaneum and Pompeii were buried by Vesuvius in 79 AD, but archaeologists later in the 70s and 80s found out that those burials were on top of another substrata of a more ancient civilization that had been buried before them, and they and they have dated it at 1700 BC, which is an approximate. That approximate is a scientific bullseye for the Ogygian deluge, which was 1687 BC. The Avellino, it's called the Avellino eruption, which is why well, I found it interesting because it's talking about the red dust that, that, that blanketed Avellino. Now, uh, in these video clips I'm showing, there are a lot of events in 1902 that are in the in the video, but I, I, I'm not discussing those. You can stop and screenshot those, but there's a lot of, there's a lot I just can't get to, but they're in these little video clips. So uh, mob syndicate. Harley Davidson's 1903. You got 1901 here. But yeah, let's uh let's move let's move on. Okay, we're gonna take that off the stage. All right, moving right along. Uh, let me get over here. A lot, lot of stuff to call it, guys. I'm sorry. So, <clears throat> 1902 begins, and we're gonna we're gonna launch 19, 19, 1902 off with relevant with relevant discoveries in archaeology. Let me explain. All throughout my channel, I show you that because we live in a hologram, because we live in a construct that, that's based on holographic principles, we are always going to find these amazing gems. These cross calendrical parallels. These we're gonna find. We're gonna find the unfolding of historical events are always patterned uh, by by antecedents. We're gonna find. We're gonna find things like in 1902 because 1902 is attached to the Phoenix phenomenon every 138 years. Then it's amazing. It's amazing that we find in the discoveries by archaeologists things that were destroyed, buried, or connected to the events of the Phoenix phenomenon on those past 138-year events. It's amazing. First of all, in 1902, excavations at Nineveh in Assyria began, and it was the Nineveh tablets that told us about the pin deity, about the pin deity and how it appeared, and later it was called the Phoenix, but it's the Assyrian Oh, uh, it's the Assyrian libraries that were later buried in a Phoenix cataclysm, totally buried. It's the reason they were preserved. It's the reason why we have 250 to 260,000 cuneiform tablets from the Near East today, because the entire area was buried in mud and fallout from the sky. Had that not have happened then those libraries would have been raided and destroyed by enemies. It didn't happen. They were all perfectly preserved. So. This is a this is excavations begin at Nineveh in Assyria, but this is just this is they just begin there. They spread out rapidly throughout the Near East from 1902 onward. So excavations of the destruction of Minoan Crete at Phaistos was unearthed. So this is important because Phaistos was destroyed in 1687 BC. This is the this is the origin of the famous Phaistos disc. You've seen the disc with the with the spiral of of symbols that goes around. They still claim it's undecipherable, but uh, it is scientifically dated at 17. The destruction is at 1700 BC. Again, a scientific bullseye for the Ogygian flood caused by the Phoenix in 1687 BC. And remember, the Ogygian deluge started with what? Red mud, red rain, red dust, fallout all over the world. The sun went dark. The moon was red. Terrible earthquakes. Then the flooding started. So, uh, the fa- the face those disc. I I I'm real eager for somebody to translate that. I would really like to know what it is since it's one of the only writings that came out of that that period. So that's the face those disc. So in 1902. So it's interesting that Phaistos, which was destroyed in 1687 BC, would be excavated in 1902, another Phoenix year. And again, a farmer plowing a field near near La Majora 
in the mountains of Veracruz State discovered the Tuxtla statuette. This is famous. Tux, it's T-U-X-T-L-A statuette. Later acquired by the Smithsonian Institution. A squat, bullet-shaped human with a duck bill and wings covered in 75 epi-olmic glyphs. Its own inscribed long date calendar, calendar date is March 162 Common Era. In our calendar, it would be the year 162. Now, this is a... In 1902, this was the oldest long count date ever found. 162 is very interesting. Remember, calendars are self-referencing and cross calendrical parallels are found everywhere. What I mean is I'm going to have to show you, I'm going to have to show you a chart real quick for you to understand how important this discovery was, what it means. So let's present, uh, share screen. I talk about this artifact in my Nuna files, but I also have it here. Let me find it for you. Got so much stuff. Got so much stuff around here. All right, here we go. I don't know. Okay, here we go. That's it. All right. I know you guys have seen this chart before. The red. The red spheres at the top are all the Phoenix dates. Huge, huge destructions and then just regional ones. Those are the red. The black ones underneath that are all Nemesis X object. The yellow bars are all, uh, yellow green bars right there are all Mayan long count dates. You can see the 404 cursed earth, the Curther, cursed earth system, the Phoenix deals right here, 414 in the middle. Every 414 years is a cursed earth period under the Phoenix system. Now, what I'm what I'm drawing to your attention here is Nemesis X object right here appeared in 162. You see, it's on this chart. We have data for the destruction and the sighting in 162 of the Nemesis X object. Here where here's where it appeared. The very next appearance was in 522, the same year and the only year in all world history that both the Nemesis X object and Phoenix were right here, were in, were in the sky at the same time. But before that, in 162, we have the Nemesis X object. It's on a 792 year periodicity right there. That is the date of that object that was found, but it was found here in 1902 toward the end of the phoenix calendar the phoenix system the phoenix holography is calendrical and the nemesis x the nemesis x timeline is calendrical and here they are we find here we here, here we have a data point that that references each other one one is the date on the on the artifact and when it disappeared and the other is when the artifact was was excavated and it references references back to this date we have a lot of, we have a lot of these little you can call them coincidence if you want but after a while throughout this video you're going to have to admit when you know too many coincidences exhibits no coincidence at all you can only you can only find so many of these before you're like overwhelmed with them all right let me get back to where i was i need to stop screen all right so that was all. Uh, now, another thing that's interesting about it is, is that this Olmec statuette has a duck bill, a bullet-shaped, a bullet-shaped skull squat and has wings. This is this is almost like P P Pazuzu, the Assyrian, the Assyrian demon, uh, which are uh, also called Teraphim, little statues of the Anunnaki. So it, that's 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 pretty interesting. Now that 162 date is not is not just the appearance of the Nemesis X object. That 162 date is also perfectly on the Anunnaki Nur chronology. Markegs veterans know what I'm talking about. Every 600 years is a Nur. 
162 AD is is a is the 600th year of a NUR, and then it switches over to another one. You can't make this up stuff up. So this one artifact actually bridges three different timekeeping systems. One involves the Phoenix, one involves the Nemesis X object, and one involves the Anunnaki. It's very interesting. Thank you, Errol. It's all about that 1902 today, guys. So here's a really interesting one. 2239 BC, the day the sky fell, collapse of the vapor canopy, the traditions of Noah and the ark, it's the great flood. But what happens in 1902, which is another Phoenix year? George Hagopian, an Armenian, was taken up to the summit of Mount Ararat in Turkey at a time when the ice cap was greatly diminished. He personally beheld the remains of a gigantic wooden ship constructed of vast timbers so old they were virtually petrified. His descriptions matched the reports of others on the structure's color, dimensions, architectural features, and location at over 12,000 feet elevation entombed in ice. I've done a lot of research. I have several books in here on Noah's Ark and all the different discoveries. <clears throat> President Jimmy Carter his, his uh, Air Force One was diverted so President Jimmy Carter could actually see it on the side of uh, Mount Ararat. Uh, uh, CIA satellites have taken pictures of it. The first expedition, this is 1902, shortly after this was reported by George Hacobian, Hacobian the Romanovs in Russia dispatched a scientific team and they took measurements, they took pictures, they took reels, they photographed everything and they brought all of that back to Moscow. Unfortunately, this was 1916 when they went out, when they went on their expedition. When they came back, none of them were ever heard from again. All that information was completely, completely taken from them and it vanished. The Jewish Bolsheviks had taken over Russia which was a Christian empire under the Romanovs, and they executed the Romanov family. All the archives, all the scientific stuff, all that stuff was destroyed. All the libraries were burned throughout Russia, except for selected works. And 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 then the Bolsheviks turned turn around and got and they got they got writers, Jewish writers from all over the world, and they commissioned them, and they literally filled Russia up with a whole bunch of of new versions of history, according to the Bolsheviks. And we lost all that information on, on, on that structure. Now, do I believe it was Noah's Ark? I don't know. I don't know. Because in my research, I have already, I have already promoted to you guys that I have found references that there wasn't a single Ark. There was fleets of Arks. And that one might have been just one that was found. And, and, and the whole story of Noah was attached to the one relic that was found when it really wasn't Noah's Ark. I don't know. I just don't know. So. <clears throat> that was uh, George Hagobian. So that's 1902, though, a Phoenix year. So we have itself, the holography is self-referencing. Things that happened on Phoenix years seem to have uh, seem to have, be connected to events in time and space in 1902. 1902 is very interesting. It's not just an ordinary Phoenix year. It's actually the beginning of something else, and we'll get to that. But in 1902. Sir Norman Lockyer's research on Stonehenge is completed. He finishes his reports. His measurements were taken in 1901. By 1902, he finishes reports and releases them to the scientific community. The work is titled Stonehenge and Other British Stone Monuments, where he relates that the monument was erected for astronomical pur purposes and that all the evidence suggests that Stonehenge was a calendar for a different type of system we don't understand today. But one thing, one thing that came out of the measurements and the Stonehenge research is very interesting. This was 1902, but it was published that Stonehenge and the heel stone is oriented is oriented to to draw attention 
to the month of May. Mara Keg's veterans know where this is going. 1902. On Malta, the hypogeum is discovered. Galleries and chambers of rock carved out of limestone dating from the Great Destruction, 2239 B.C., when the Mediterranean uh, was created almost in a single day when the Strait of Gibraltar broke. That was the Phoenix, that was the Phoenix cataclysm of the collapse of the vapor canopy, 2239 BC. That is what destroyed Malta, Gigantia, the Gigantia Temple, the Hypogeum, all these things on Malta. Giant 20 to 80 ton blocks on Malta were blown by the tsunami. Uh, a quarter of a mile, and they have been found offshore. David Hatcher Childers goes into a lot of detail. You can see from the megalithic distribution of the distribution of megaliths all over Malta and in the water, you can see where the tsunami came and how it just washed all this stuff off the island. It's very interesting. But here it is, 1902, and something that was destroyed by the Great Flood is suddenly discovered. 1902, in the month of May, 1902, archaeologists first noticed a metal wheel in a lump of pressed debris that later came to be known as the Antikythera computer. It was discovered in 1901 by sponge divers off of Crete, off a little island called Antikythera. Now, no one knew what it was. It was just part of the shipwreck. But in 1902, somebody actually set it aside and started looking at it, and they realized it had gears in it. Came under scrutiny. The highly complex device had been excavated from wreckage under the Mediterranean, a 300-ton ship on its way to Rome, loaded with the plunder from the Third Mithridatic War. Told you guys a lot about the Poison King, King Mithridates IV, who took on Rome. And the great mysterious rock that fell from the sky that stopped him from beating the Romans' asses. Remember that? So this ship had been sunk around 60 to 70 B.C. It was publicly announced in 1902 that the Antikythera device was indeed a sophisticated geared computer older than 2,000 years used to chart astronomical orbital periods of the moon, sun, and planets both forward and backward in time. This is important. Remember, this computer device that was over 2,000 years old is designed to compute periods of time, both backward and forward in time. And it was discovered, this was discovered in 1902. I can't hammer that in more because you're about to see some more stuff that's perfectly relative to the backward and forward in time phenomenon. You know this, I call it calendrical isometrics. So incredibly complex is the mechanism with its precision cut differential geared systems that it is evident that the technology required to manufacture the metal computer is more sophisticated than the mechanism itself. The computer was constructed sometime after 713 BC because it employs a 365.24 day year. Now, Zechariah Sitchin remarks that the pointer on the relic, there's a pointer on the relic that, that shows its, its true purpose. The pointer on the relic, uh, according to Zechariah Sitchin, is uh, 586 B.C. But he's wrong. No, excuse me, it's going to be 584 B.C. But he's wrong because Zechariah, Zechariah Sitchin, who is Jewish, was trying to trying to associate the sophisticated device to the fall of Jerusalem in 585 BC. He's wrong. Now, the scientist, Dr. Derek DeSola Price, who spent 20 years studying this mechanism, he x-rayed it, took it apart. He built replicas of it. Uh, he says the pointer was close to 586 BC. Now, uh, I believe both of these men are wrong simply because it was designed to measure astronomical events forward and backward in time. And there is nothing in 586 or 584 that would, that would, that would, uh, there's no eclipses, there's nothing that, that, that would make those dates stand out. However, in 583 BC, 
We have the phoenix darken the sun, and this is in the historical record. It's the reason why Thales of Miletus was named one of the seven uh, wise men of Greece, because two years before it happened, Thales predicted that the sun was going to go dark, and it did, and he wasn't predicting an eclipse. Eclipses were well known by Herodotus, who records the story in Plutarch. They knew all about they knew all about eclipses, and they and they told many eclipse uh, uh, scenarios and other, But when it comes to the darkening of the sun of 583 BC, it was something else. It's on the 138 year timeline. It's also it's also started calendars like the Pythian calendar. But uh, anyway, in the first century BC, according to Cicero. These amazing computer astrolabs existed, and ancient Greek and Roman authors even attributed Thales of Miletus as having built astrolabs that helped them predict events. This is an historical record. We, in 1902, they found one. So, uh, um, let's see, uh, Ammianus Marcellinus, uh, he possessed, no, no, excuse me, Marcus Marcellinus possessed one of the one of these astral labs which demonstrated the motion of the sun the moon the planets and it was made in sicily at syracuse and cicero in the first century bc claimed it was a very ancient invention and that a similar model was located at rome so I, it's a and let's see i got notes on in fact thales of miletus and archimedes were believed to be the builders of these devices. Yeah, that's why I say it's 583, guys. 583 was a Phoenix phenomenon day, and it makes sense of the Antikythera computer. But another reason why I, I believe that it was designed to predict uh, Phoenix episodes every 138 years is because it was discovered in 1902, a Phoenix year. Remember, these things in our holography are self-referencing, and you're going to see a whole lot more evidence of that right here in this video. 1902, archaeology in Egypt. The Egyptian Antiquity Service, uh, headed by Gaston Maspero, total criminal. He organized a multinational coalition of missions that would, in different groups, excavate the Giza complex and Sphinx, as well as other temple pyramid sites throughout Egypt. He highly compartmentalized all the study of Egypt. He even had disciplinary measures set in place for those, for those, for any type of cross-contamination, such as uh, any anybody cross-referencing. He didn't want an archaeological team to find things that he couldn't control before the word got out that certain things were found. This is what he was doing. He was censoring. 1902, in the Near East, in Assyria, the, co oh, the Code of Hammurabi of Babylon, dedicated to the Anunnaki, is excavated. This is the, this is the Code of Hammurabi. 1902, Director Major John Wesley of the Smithsonian Institute it's his 23rd and final year. Uh, 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 also over the U.S. Bureau of Ethnology, he dies. So he dies in 1902. But during his tenure, since 1879 to 1902, countless anomalous American artifacts sent to the Smithsonian under his care completely vanished. Over and over and over and over throughout newspapers, microfish, published books, everywhere, private letters, everywhere in the 1880s, uh, in the 1880s, 1890s, all, all the way up to 1901, there are complaints about all these amazing finds that were sent to the Smithsonian, and then there was just silenced. It was later found out that Director Wesley had decommissioned he, he had purchased decommissioned ships, packed them with artifacts, and sank them in the Atlantic. Yeah, guys, that's insane. So, yeah, Shiva, I get it. Smithsonian Institute. So, 1902... We are also visited with the sudden appearance of new translations of, of 
ancient works. R. H. Child, R. H. Charles, tran uh, his translation of the Book of Enoch is famous, published in 1902. And then uh, Fleming has a translation of the Ethiopic Book of Enoch, published at Leipzig. Dr. Fleming's translation is based on 15 ancient manuscripts of the Book of Enoch. Here's two different translations of the Book of Enoch. Both of them good. Both of them still very popular and number one, number one sellers on the markets. Both of them appeared in 1902. And we all know, Archaic's veterans, we all know the connections between Enoch and the Phoenix. Oh, and Enoch and the Great Pyramid. But we'll get to the Great Pyramid here in a little while because it is relative to 1902. Enoch's book declares that its contents were not for his generation, but were for a far future generation. Generation. I'm going to quote him. He says, I understood what I saw, but not for this generation, but for a remote one, which is for to come. <laughs> also in 1902, the ancient Babylonian Enema Elish is published and translated. The cuneiform seven tablets of creation from which we got our modern book of Genesis from. At least, at least the creation account. It's published from, it's published, translated into English straight from the Akkadian in 1902. So these tablet records concern the primordial restoration of earth as it begins begins a new life after a previous destruction. Tiamat is slain. So the Anima Elish text venerate, here's, a, here's another, here's another, another weird connection to 1902. The Anima Elish text venerate the Anunnaki. In the Anima Elish, it reads that our world was covered in blood of the slain dragon Tiamat in the beginning. The, the renovation of our world is from the blood of a slain dragon. Well, Phoenix was called the sky dragon in ancient times. And every time it appeared, it rained red, red torrential rains, red mud, and red dust, all depending upon the relative humidity all over the world. So this Anima Elish that talks about the world being covered in the blood of the slain dragon Tiamat. It's all here, guys. In 1902, a phoenix year, this appears. 1902, Budge and King publish the Annals of the Kings of Assyria, wherein is read in the records of King Ashurbanipal II of the location of Mount Nasir, where Udnapishtim's ship came to rest after the flood, according to the Epic of Gilgamesh. Wow. 1902, George Hagopian of Armenia goes up to Mount, Mount Ararat and finds this giant structure. Russians go out there after that, and they go measure it, and they, go, they do all this stuff. 1902, an ancient text found underground that's over 3,000 years old is, is translated into the English language in 1902 that talks about that very structure on that very mountain concerning the flood in Noah. The parallels just keep, the coincidences just keep piling up. 1902, modernist movement, higher criticism begins. Welcome, Robert Porter. Historians, historians in 1902 began deep digging deep into the Christian histories, and they began to expose forgeries, falsified documents, and many interpolations into, into secular writings from the antiquity committed uh, by the church translators and copyists, meaning whole portions of Documents that the church said were original were actually forgeries, and older documents were incorporated word for word. Uh, I found many of them, guys. A matter of fact, the whole sun darkening episode and earthquake when Jesus was on the cross was all stolen from a historian named Trallis of Bithynia. 
he had already wrote about the Phoenix phenomenon in either 31, it was either 31 or 168 BC. He had recorded one of those uh, in Bithynia, those documents, those documents were taken. So were, so was uh, the Phoenix phenomenon episode of Nicodemus when he's, um, what is it, uh, Pontius Pilate's report to Tiberius Caesar. In that forged document, we have a whole Phoenix phenomenon related about the sun darkening. And, and all these are older Phoenix documents that the church took, rewrote, incorporated into their forged documents, trying to make it, trying to establish the veracity of Christianity to an unbelieving world. And uh, this is 1902, these started getting exposed. So, so many scholars were in on this, exposing all these old church forgeries as being total BS, that the Roman Catholic supremacy was threatened. And in response to the brilliant works of these scholars, bringing to light all these fallacies, Pope Leo XIII created the Pontifical Biblical Commission to oversee the works of all theological scholars to make sure they did not stray from the teachings of the official church papal censorship. You can't make this stuff up. 1902. 1902, German Assyriologist Frederick de Lisch delivered a lecture before the Kaiser in German court concerning biblical history in light of the new cuneiform Assyrian writings that were being translated at that time. Books, speeches, pamphlets, articles, letters resulted a fury of dissidents from both biblical believers and higher critics. Delish claimed that much of the Old Testament writings were borrowed from ancient Babylonian stories and Assyrian stories. He was absolutely correct. This is 1902. However, the world wasn't ready to receive that. The people who believed the Bible wanted to believe it was 100% the word of God and all the stories were true. The, the, the academics wanted to believe that all the, all the stories that are found in the, in the traditions of 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 Assyrian Babylon was just purely mythological and they did not support the Bible at all. So yeah, he showed, he showed that there was, there was, that there's actually a compromise here, but they weren't trying to hear it. Just weren't trying to hear it in 1902. 1902, Chauncey Brewster Tinker translated the epic poem Beowulf from the old English uh, language, Anglo-Saxon into modern English. His book was titled Beowulf, translated out of the Old English. Beowulf is an amazing story. Thought about Sigurd, the giant, the giant slayer, and, and Beowulf and Hrothgar and the Danes. It's got stories of the old world, giant animals, the Grendels, like Nephilim. It's got the stories of the flood. Yeah, Beowulf is awesome. It's 1902. 1902. That's amazing. So going in going in 1902, I got a video clip to show you. We're just we're just getting started on 1902, guys. We are just getting started on 1902. I've already been talking an hour and 16 minutes. We got we got yeah, guys. We got 1902 is about to uh, I'm about to unleash it right now, starting now. Now there's a lot of new, there's a lot of firsts and a lot of new things that came out in 1902. I'm not presenting in this video. There's a bunch of them. You can find them easy online and all that. But we're gonna get into a lot more than you think. So let me present again, right here, a video file. All right, present. As in 1901, we find that the events of 1902 were also preceded by a few weeks by the appearance of a new star, this time in Gemini, as seen from South Africa. This was on the 16th. In April and May 1902, across a zone of this Earth, also outside the zone, there were disturbances. More than Earth-wide relations are indicated, according to Ford. Court itemizes a long list of these events. The volcanic eruptions of Mount Pele and Martinique uh, at, I can't pronounce this, La Safir on St. Vincent, and an earthquake in Siberia as mud fell from the sky in Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, and in Connecticut in North America. On May 7th, the sky over France turned black. Soot and water like ink fell upon part 
St. Mount. On May 10th, a great number of highly colored objects like little suns were seen in the sky over South Devon. Later, later in May, in 1902, spectacular meteoric showers occurred over the West Indies. Earthquake shocks occurred in Spain and France, a volcanic eruption in Mexico, quakes in the Fiji Islands, a violent quake in Iceland, and a volcanic eruption at Cook's Island, Alaska. In Rangoon, Burma, it so happened that the most terrible storm that ever occurred was remembered. A remarkable meteor seen in Calcutta and in Java, the, the I guess it's Raung volcano erupted as rumbling came from an extinct volcano in the country of France. Over Guatemala, a thunderstorm with terrific electrical discharges dumped enormous volumes of water during an earthquake. In Charles Fort's 1902 data now indicates phenomena on a solar system-wide scope. And again, a new star appears, but this time not in Perseus or Gemini, but in the southern constellation Puppis, as reported in popular astronomy. It appeared in October, and Fort again theorizes this new star is responsible for the following phenomena. In October 1902, vast amounts of smoke-like haze of unknown origin obscured all things at sea from the Philippines to Hong Kong and the Philippines to Australia. It was so thick it impeded navigation. This blanketing of the Southern Pacific was only a couple weeks before a series of atmospheric fallouts that would not end until well into 1903. By November 12, 1902, our world had traveled along the eclipse to the opposite side of the sun as it was positioned six months earlier in the month of May. On November 12th and 13th, 1902, occurred the greatest fall of matter in the history of Australia. Upon the 14th of November, it rained mud in Tasmania. There was a haze from Australia to Hong Kong, hundreds of millions of tons of matter that fell upon Australia, Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, and Europe in 1902 and 1903. Blankets of dust and sometimes mud Take ships to where all hands had to be reported on deck just to scoop and shovel mud off, off the ships in order for it not to capsize. As dust, dirt, and mud rained on Australia, the densest darkness lit up with glare. Fires were falling from the sky as seen through giant pockets of mud. Balls of fire from the sky fell upon and ignited the ground in every district of Victoria even setting fire to houses. At Washington, the whole air seemed on fire. Buildings were burnt in Bort, Allendale, Delinquin, uh, Landale, and Chiltern. This incendiary sky was followed by a rain of red dust and darkness through about 50 towns in Australia. They suffered this darkness and disasters and forewoke little of this tremendous occurrence has been told in the publications that are said to be scientific. It has been ignored. Australian reports read that there was nothing like it before in the history of the colony, with people stumbling about blind with lanterns. On the same day, November 12, 1902, ashes with sulfurous odors fell in New Zealand, and meteorite fell at Kamsagar, Mysore, India, and disastrous flooding happened in the Malay state. Seven bridges carried away. Also, volcanoes erupted at, I guess it's Kilauea, uh, Hawaii, and on the 13th, a volcano at Savi in Samoa erupted, and at Windward Islands, West Indies, Stromboli and Mount uh, Chutapata in Peru. That's my best guess. Over Parramatta, Australia, and on the 13th, a meteor exploded. Five days later, on the 18th, a fireball fell, exploding terrifically at Karkor. At Murrumburra, Australia, dust and a large fireball fell from the sky. Ford notes that on this day, the new star and puppet shined at its greatest magnitude when a six-foot tidal surge struck the coast of southern Australia. On the 20th, Sir Charles Todd of LA Observatory reported a large fireball was seen moving so slowly it was observed for a total of four minutes. On the 21st, a fireball uh, apparent size of the sun was seen at Taweta. An hour later, several towns were illuminated by a great fireball or an explosion. The next day, on the 22nd, a fireball passed over the town of Nangan, Australia, intensely illuminating the night and ground, and a fireball exploded at Ipswich, Queensland. 
The report covered 334 years of documented reports. He specifically focuses on 1902 and 1903 as particularly unique. Concerning the contorted scientific reasonings of his day, he wrote in the book Low that it belongs to the Dark Age or the other Dark Age of the year 1902. All right. Let's see here. Oh man, the video was visible the whole time. Oh man, really? That's terrible. That's all right. Those are old pictures anyway. Damn, man, how'd that happen? I guess I didn't present it right. That's okay. It was all to be listened to anyway. It just had a picture show with it. I'll be damned. That's okay. Let's move on. Gotta figure out what happened, why that, why that happened like that. I need a Martin Leakey training session. He knows how to use this software real good. So, as you can tell, there was no reason for me to reiterate all these things. It's a uh, it is a, it's a, you know what, at the end of this video, at the end of this video, I'll show that because you know what, there was about 12 pictures of all kinds of weird stuff that happened in 1902, like plagues uh, and admission that an entire war was interrupted because of natural disasters. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. So at the end of this video, I'll just scroll that, I'll scroll that video. We'll go, we'll, we'll go out with that video so you can see it. All right. So that's uh the disasters or something else. So 1902 in the month of May, you all know, Phoenix veterans, you all know, every every time Phoenix destroys stuff, it's in the month of May. So in the month of May, the French Caribbean island of Martinique at the city of Saint Pierre, about 400 miles south of Puerto Rico. Um, a Protestant missionary in March, before, this is before May, his name is George Penny, and he visited and distributed Bibles at Martinique. The city was a Catholic, though, it was French. It was a Catholic city, and the local clergy, they were enraged, and they threatened his life if he did not leave the city. After he left, the Catholic clergy, they, they confiscated all the Bibles. Yeah, in 1902, you weren't even allowed to have a Bible if you were a Catholic. You had to go to mass and you can only listen to it in Latin. It's just a bunch, bunch of BS. So the Catholics were, were confiscated. These Bibles were confiscated and the Catholic uh, priest and the, and whoever they are, diocese, whatever they were, they, they, did a, they did a public book burning and they invited everybody in Martinique to come and they burned all those Bibles in March. So uh, on the day of Easter, the same Catholic priests sacrificed a pig and tied a Protestant Bible to the dead animal and dragged it through the streets of St. Pierre. That's crazy. This is, this is crazy, guys, because when they did this on Easter, that same night, Mount Pele began smoking. You can't make this stuff up. It's crazy. <clears throat> it is the tallest mountain in the island, and it was an it was supposed to have been an extinct volcano. It rumbled continually on till May 9th. So uh some say it was May 9th, some say it was May 8th when it exploded. I don't know. I got different books telling me different stuff. So the for, uh the force of the blast blew over ships in the harbor. A searing hot wave front of broiling gases incinerated the city, burning alive all 30,000 French Catholic inhabitants and their buildings, as well as most of the ships in the harbor, as well as many of the outlying ranches and settlements and villages that were full of people. Yeah, guys, two of these three books say 40,000 people died. Only one man survived. I told the story before. He used to he used to be on the circuit with with a uh, Barnum and uh, Barnum Circus, PT Barnum Circus, before it was Barnum and Bailey. 
Yeah, it's a. He was sentenced to die. They said he had murdered somebody, and he was sentenced to die. And he was in an underground dungeon. It's the only reason why he survived. And uh, the after they after they rescued him, he had been underground for four days, no food, no water. And rescue attempts <clears throat> when they were when they were dragging all the all the humans were burnt to a crisp. So. They had, they were they spent the military came in and they just spent days and days dragging bodies to these pyres and they were just burning them before before disease was released and uh, uh as they were clearing out areas and finding more and more bodies in the rubble and all that they heard his they heard him underground and that's how he got rescued and the French authorities let him go because they said there is no way yeah they said the French authority says there is no way that a man condemned to death would be the only one alive if it wasn't the will of God. So they uh, they let him make it. His name is Luger Silbaris, L-U-D-G-E-R Silbaris, S-Y-L-B-A-R-S. Yeah. <clears throat> so he was a prisoner. He got lucky. Uh, see, Martinique had priorly funneled many African slaves into American ports. This is Martinique. Um uh, Dense clouds of purple gases and aqueous vapors had afflicted the island. Quickly after the volcanic disaster, plants and animals returned to Martinique bigger than usual. Exceptional sized plants, animals, and insects. Even the doctor, even the doctor Jules Gravure grew two and a half inches taller, and his assistant, Dr. Rune, aged 59, grew almost two inches just from exposure to the ambient radiation on the island. So uh, Martinique also, for those who don't know, Martinique also was had been visited early on by, by Cristobal Colon, you know of as Christopher Columbus, Jewish navigator. All right, 1902. Also, destruction, this destructive volcano at Santa Maria in Guatemala. Uh, it kills a lot of people as well. Volcanic eruption covered the ancient Olmec site of Takilik Abaj. Remember the Olmec artifact that was found that links us to the Anunnaki and the Anunnaki Nur calendar and and the Nemesis X object uh, chronology. Now we have another we have another link here in 1902 to the Olmecs. And remember this great Central American Ecuadorian Olmec Veracruz state area was wiped out on Phoenix cycles in 1687 BC during the Avellino event, and then again in 31 BC, which was also on the 552 year cycle. I showed you the big dark black suns. Those are the big events every 552 years. 1902 and 2040 are not on those big 552 year events, but 2040 is a lot closer than 1902 is. Now, uh, so yeah, so uh, the whole Olmec area gets reburied by volcanic destruction in 1902 in Guatemala. Um, also in 1902, the Sofrer volcano erupted, damaging Windward Island and St. Vincent in the British West Indies, killing about 2,000 people. Well, these are conservative guys. A lot of times, a lot of times in the, in these days, I know some of you don't want to hear it, but a lot of times in, in the 1800s and early 1900s, the the white population made made the fatal, fatality count. A lot of times they did not include the black populations. This is the same as Martinique. This is the same as uh, uh, all those islands in the Caribbean and the West Indies. They have real high black populations, and there's a lot of white people there as well. And it's just, just this is that's the culture that existed back then. That's what they did. So uh, now, 1902 quake, October 5th. There was an earthquake in Mexico, but there was an earthquake earlier in Mexico in January as well. So Mexico got hit twice. Um, uh, let's see, there was earthquake activity in the Grenadines. Uh, we have we have we have volcanoes at Martinique, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, Santa Maria, and Guatemala. Or sorry, that was Santa that was Santa Maria, Guatemala. Now I want to. This is up close and personal. Now, this is the book in the shadow right here. In the shadow of death right here. This is the book. We're going this book right here. 
on page 22, it says, this is, this is published in 1902, it says, changes in the sea level were noticed as far as Jamaica and Puerto Rico. The sea level fluctuated. Not waves, we're talking about the water dropped. This is what we find at Martinique here in a minute. As early as May 1st, even before the volcanic activity, there was observed strange atmospheric conditions, and the ocean was recorded to behave oddly. This book was a compilation of a bunch of, of ship navigators and everything that they saw in the local area. One of these accounts is going to blow your mind. It was before the eruption, what happened. So oh, that's on page 22. And page 23, about the atmosphere, unusual atmospheric conditions, days, over a week before the volcano exploded, there's already strange things happening in the sky. And the ocean level has dropped in that area. So on page 40, it says, the sea receded all along the western coast of Martinique and returned as if nothing had happened. This is right before the blast. On April 18th, this is the month before. On April 18th, which you guys know, I've mentioned this many times, April 18th is a terrible day. Throughout human history, April 18th is terrible. It's the 108th day of the year. Now, blinding light lightning flashed across the sky, followed by a freak thunderstorm and torrential rain that surprised the inhabitants of Guatemala City. But before they could even seek shelter from the downpour, the earthquake was upon them. The earthquake felled cities all around and continued damaging them for a week of aftershocks in Central America. Six cities and, a hun and hundreds of villages, plantations and settlements were ruined and all the death tolls were estimates for the dead were numerous and many remained entombed in the piles of ruinous heaps. They couldn't actually make accurate death tolls. Too many people were instantly buried in structures and they never dug them out. They built on top of them. So the next day across Central America, the dead were everywhere, torn apart, buried and hanging from splintered timbers. The total death toll was from 7,000 to 20,000, but official sources today provided only the most conservative numbers reflecting those bodies that were actually found. So it's on page 170, 169 to 176. On page 182, we read that the earthquakes in Mexico had, uh, had a great loss of life in the year 1902. That's page 182. On page 182, we have this astounding statement. Guys, get this. Especially those of you who like to follow the sciences and all that uh, geology, listen to this statement from a volcanologist, an actual accredited geologist in 1902 when he was being interviewed for this book. They were asking him his opinions about volcanism and what was going on and all that. This man, a scientist, said in 1902, he said, the old theory that the very center of the earth is a molten mass is no longer held. That's a deep statement. You know why? Because it's 2024. And if you look in any scientific books today, they're still going to tell you that the center of our world is a molten sphere of, of magma. And this is the origin of volcanoes. This geologist is telling you that's not true in 1902. All right. So. In this book here, what is this? Flood of Fire. Martinique, Flood of Fire and Burning Rain. In this book here, page 55. <coughs> Survivors out at sea who came to the island after the eruption claimed that about 40,000 people were killed in an instant. Of the 18 ocean-going vessels that were in the harbor, 17 of them were destroyed or caught fire and sank. One ship made it out of the harbor, and it was called the Rodham. It escaped, but over half of its crew were burned to death. It's page 55. On page 80, 
sounding scientific soundings conducted around Martinique after the eruption revealed that the elevations in the seabed all around the island had changed. In one place, formerly recorded to be 600 feet deep, was now 4,000 feet of depth under the ocean. Everything changed around that island. Several hundred miles away from Martinique on May 7th, before the eruption, the crew of the ship Nordby. Oh, man, this is crazy. This is the crazy one I was telling you about. Listen to this. Several hundred miles away from, from Martinique. Several hundred miles. On May 7th, before the eruption, the crew of the Nordby sailing from Sicily noticed that the air and sea had become unusually hot to the extreme that the men removed their clothes and all on deck were becoming alarmed. Some imagined that the pitch in the seams of the ship was even softening. That's dangerous. The ship will fall apart. Then suddenly, the whole ship dropped about four feet in the water, and huge waves rose up all around them from what was formerly a completely still sea. For a ship, okay, ships have displacement values. How much tonnage is displaced, how, how deep it sinks in the water. I think the Titanic was like 88,000 tons, something like that. But listen, for a ship to just sink four feet in the water means the water has lost its buoyancy. Air has been removed out of that water. And, and the ship, this ship is now hanging deeper into the water. The water is increasing in, in temperature. Now... They're describing waves that are chopping up and coming up everywhere. It's chaotic. Here, let me let me let me tell you what they said. So you so you'll so I don't want to put words in their mouth. Uh, then suddenly the whole ship dropped about four feet in the water, and huge waves rose up all around that were chaotic and not going in any particular direction. There was no wind. Then something went wrong with the sun. The sun grew red and then dark red. And then later in the afternoon, the sun disappeared while it was supposed to be in the sky. The day got so dark, one could not see from one end of the ship to the other. In the darkness, sheets of lightning lit up the sea and we saw the terrible waves, ugly and without order. But there was no thunder and there was no wind. In the lightning flashes, the horrified sailors watched as hundreds of sharks appeared to be leaping out of the water. Men prayed, panicked, and some were openly claiming that this was the last day. Even the officers of the ship began to think that the world was coming to an end. The ordeal lasted over six hours. This was on May 7th. The next day, on May 8th, Mount Paley would explode, killing everyone in St. Pierre. That is Phoenix phenomenon. That is perfectly described over and over and over what I've described so many times throughout the past, how this, even on a clear day, the sun vanishes. It goes out. So there, there's, there's no fallout. There's no ashes here. There's nothing falling from the sky. There's nothing. The only anomaly is that the ocean has gotten very hot. <clears throat> that's on pages 80, that's on pages 81 and 83. That is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Yeah, there could be methane in the water. Yeah, it could be any type of gas that would have made the, the water less buoyant. There's no doubt, no doubt. They didn't say they smelled sulfur though. They documented everything back then. May 7th, 1902, Mount Soufrere burst, killing many with lava, and survivors claim that, that the dark sky produced lightning that also reached out and killed people as they ran. What? In prior presentations, I've given you guys evidence that Phoenix is discriminating discriminating meaning there are populations it lets it lets go and there and there are others that it it, it it hunts down and doesn't let them escape if the lava and the ash and the pumice and the falling boulders and the mud and the boiling mudslides don't kill them look what happened here 
lightning bolts go out. As, as some people are watching, as people are running for their lives, lightning bolts come out and take them down. That is amazing. <clears throat> All right. That was page 119. Now, here's something you need to know about Mount Pele, about this volcanic destruction, and uh, St. Vincent, uh, Santa Maria, all this volcanic activity. There was no vo volcanic activity in 1901. None. In 1902, not only do we have volcanic activity on a phoenix year, but here's what you need to know. It's 2024 right now, and nowhere in the world since 1902 have we experienced anything like the death tolls and massive destruction that happened in 1902 caused by volcanoes. Natural disasters happen all the time, and the death tolls were high. But when it comes to volcanism, this incident in 1902 is still at the top of the scientific records. It's still there. The volcanic destruction and death toll is still on record as the worst in the Western Hemisphere history of all time. And there have been no, uh, there have been no uh, volcanic anywhere in the world since 1902 have volcanoes taken so many lives. Not even a fraction even one of the greatest volcanic destructions this world has ever seen in modern times in our lifetime is Mount St. Helens, and only a couple people died because it was so remote. But it was it was terrific. So, yeah, Phoenix took out a lot of people in 1902. And this is just, I'm just scratching the surface, guys, because... That video I showed showed you all the death tolls for all kinds of other things. Yeah, unusual things were happening all over the world that was that was killing people. You uh, know, I'm gonna I'm gonna re, I'm gonna replay that. I can't believe y'all didn't see it. I don't even know if y'all can hear it. Tell me in the chat if you at least heard it. I thought I was I played a six minute long video. Did y'all hear it clearly? Do you do you want me to to go ahead and post it so you can see it? Because there was a lot about 1902 in the imagery, things I'm not even talking about in the video articles and stuff from other books and stuff yeah somebody says yes you heard it do you want me to play it now again since we're on the topic or do you want me to wait to the very end of the video now let me know because we got time i'm not i'm not done i'm not stopping this video until i i've gotten this whole presentation out good audio yes post the video all right, I'm going to go, it says post it again, play it again, play it again. All right, cool. So, yeah, because it, it all it all starts with a strange star. Remember, Phoenix always appears. Every 138 years is a, is a red star, and it grows. But, but uh, this red star, as you saw, the scientists had to rescind their statements. That's what, That was in the video, because the red star grew an appendage. And people were looking at it, and nothing, nothing 30 light years away could move that fast. So they had to rescind their statement. They looked dumb. They just threw 30 light years. Oh, yeah, yeah, that thing's far. It's 30 light years away. And then, then a month later, they got they got to rescind that because it looked stupid. Nothing that far could move that fast. It was local. It was so local and so visual, in fact, that the newspapers reported that it was structural. Yeah, you can't make this stuff up, guys. Just can't make it up. So yes, 1902 is the is the, is the worst year in world history for volcanoes since 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 that episode since 1902. It is the worst in recorded history for all the all the Western Hemisphere. There were some bad volcanoes uh, in the 1800s in the Eastern Hemisphere, <coughs> but they weren't on a Phoenix year. So before I continue, I'm going to play that video again. I'm really upset I wasn't able to get that. So file video. Let's do it again. I'll be able to know this time if it works. Present. What is going on here? Why does it keep going here? Present video file. It keeps going to this damn thing. And I don't know why. Hmm. 
I might have too many files open. Hold on. We don't need that. Let me go here. Okay. Okay, I know how to do this. All right, let's try it this way. Wow, there's a glitch here, guys. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it, keeps, it keeps sending me to my 1901 file, and I don't want this file. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's crazy. 1901, we find that the events of 1902 were also preceded by a few weeks by the appearance of a new star, this time in Gemini, as seen from South Africa. This was on the 16th. In April and May 1902, across a zone of this earth, also outside the zone, there were disturbances. More than earth-wide relations are indicated, according to Ford. Fort itemizes a long list of these events. Volcanic eruptions of Mount Pele Martinique uh, at, I can't pronounce this, La Safrire on St. Vincent, and an earthquake in Siberia as mud fell from the sky in Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, and in Connecticut in North America. On May 7th, the sky over France turned black. Soot and water like ink fell upon Park St. Maur. On May 10th, a great number of highly colored objects like little suns were seen in the sky over South Devon. Later, later in May, in 1902, spectacular meteoric showers occurred over the West Indies. Earthquake shocks occurred in Spain and France, a volcanic eruption in Mexico, quakes in the Fiji Islands, a violent quake in Iceland, and a volcanic eruption at Cook's Island, Alaska. In Rangoon, Burma, it so happened that the most terrible storm that ever occurred was remembered. A remarkable meteor seen in Calcutta and in Java, the, the I guess it's Raung volcano, erupted as rumbling came from an extinct volcano in the country of France. Over Guatemala, a thunderstorm with terrific electrical discharges dumped enormous volumes of water during an earthquake. In Charles Fort's 1902 data now indicates phenomena on a solar system-wide scope. And again, a new star appears, but this time not in Perseus or Gemini, but in the southern constellation Puppis, as reported in popular astronomy. It appeared in October, and Fort again theorizes this new star is responsible for the following phenomena. In October 1902, vast amounts of smoke-like haze of unknown origin obscured all things at sea from the Philippines to Hong Kong and the Philippines to Australia. It was so thick it impeded navigation. This blanketing of the Southern Pacific was only a couple weeks before a series of atmospheric fallouts that would not end until well into 1903. By November 12, 1902, our world had traveled along the ecliptic to the opposite side of the sun as it was positioned six months earlier in the month of May. On November 12th and 13th, 1902, occurred the greatest fall of matter in the history of Australia. Upon the 14th of November, it rained mud in Ta Ta Tasmania. There was a haze from Australia to Hong Kong, hundreds of millions of tons of matter that fell upon Australia, Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, and Europe in 1902 and 1903. Blankets of dust and sometimes mud caked ships to where all hands had to be reported on deck just to scoop and shovel mud off, off the ships in order for it not to capsize. As dust, dirt, and mud rained on Australia, the densest darkness lit up with glares. Fires were falling from the sky as seen through giant pockets of mud. Balls of fire from the sky fell upon and ignited the ground in every district of Victoria, even setting fire to houses. At Wyshen Proof, the whole air seemed on fire. Buildings were burnt in Bort, Allendale, Delinquin, uh, Langdale, and Chiltern. This incendiary sky was followed by a rain of red dust and darkness through about 50 towns in Australia. They suffered this darkness and disasters and forewrote little of this tremendous occurrence has been told in the publications that are said to be scientific. It has been ignored. Australian reports read that there was nothing like it before in the history of the colony with people stumbling about blind with lanterns. 
On the same day, November 12, 1902, ashes with sulfurous odor fell in New Zealand. A meteorite fell at Kamsagar, Mysore, India, and disastrous flooding happened in the Malay states. Seven bridges carried away. Also, volcanoes erupted at, Kil I guess it's Kilauea, uh, Hawaii, and on the 13th, a volcano at Savi in Samoa erupted, and at Windward Islands, West Indies, Stromboli, and Mount uh, Chulapata in Peru. That's my best guess. Over Parramatta, Australia, and on the 13th, a meteor exploded. Five days later, on the 18th, a fireball fell, exploding terrifically at Karkor. At Murrumburra, Australia, dust and a large fireball fell from the sky. Ford notes that on this day, the new star and puppet shined at its greatest magnitude when a six-foot tidal surge struck the coast of southern Australia. On the 20th, Sir Charles Todd of LA Observatory reported a large fireball was seen moving so slowly it was observed for a total of four minutes. On the 21st, a fireball uh, apparent size of the sun was seen at Taweta. An hour later, several towns illuminated by a great fireball or an explosion. The next day, on the 22nd, a fireball passed over the town of Nangan, Australia, intensely illuminating the night and ground, and a fireball exploded at Ipswich, Queensland. Though Fort covered 334 years of documented reports, he specifically focuses on 1902 and 1903 as particularly unique. Concerning the contorted scientific reasonings of his day, he wrote in the book Low that it belongs to the Dark Age, or the other Dark Age, of the year 1902. All right, that's good. Glad we got that out. I don't know what happened the last time. I'm just not, I'm just not real, not real ugh. There's too many, there's too many links here. I'm dealing with too much shit. All right, I'm gonna remove that from studio. Move on. So in 1902, <clears throat> we have a German bark, a German bark called the Freya. Good name. Scow, sailing along the coast of Mexico, it was found adrift, partly dismasted, lying on, on her side. Everybody was gone, never seen again. But in 1902, we have, we have, we have uh, I think on record, there's like 18 or 19 ships that were found that way. This was something that was unique to 1902. Um, sailors aboard the SS Fort Salisbury in the Gulf of Guinea uh, in the South Atlantic, they observed a dark, apparently scale, scaled object. And they estimated it was 600 feet long, and it was positioned several feet away from their ship. It was in the water. The long object slowly descended from the sky into the water, and as it submerged into the ocean, the water gave a hiss. So, <laughs> um... This is, this is unusual. It's even described as having a faint light on each end. I'm reminded of the cigar-shaped objects that we have seen and been seen in the skies and reported as far back as the days of Pliny the Elder. And the, uh, in the 12th and 13th century, the rods, the rods of God that used to fly through the air, uh, Nuremberg, 1561, 1566, uh, they, were, they were shown in paintings uh, um, or woodcuts and engravings uh, showing these rods in the sky. That's what I'm reminded of. In 1347, the great Black Death Plague, rods, those rods were described as having bellies that opened up and just dumped decomposing body parts of forest animals. And this is the origin of the great Black Death Plague, uh, according to the people of the time, not according to the academies, who today will tell you that rats from China on ships uh, are the one that spread. We already know the historical record is very clear that the plague started inland in Europe and it came to the coast later. Yeah, what we're taught is, is the opposite of the truth. So this is a, uh, that uh, that's 1902 about that. And then 1902, we have a famous case, famous. The SS Bannock burn vanished in November 1902 on Lake Superior after departing Port Arthur, Ontario with a cargo of 85,000 bushels of wheat. 
Now the steamer Algon Keen spotted her and the captain noted it, telling his mates to have a look at the majestic cargo ship. But a moment later, it was reported to the captain that the Bannock burn was not there. And the captain realized it had vanished. The men of the Algon, Algon Keen, they had noted that the Bannock burn didn't have time to sail away. No ship could move that fast. It should have been there. It didn't even have time to sink in the time that the men had looked away and looked back. Uh, also, um, there was a there was an unusual storm that night that rolled over Lake Superior, and the SS Horonica had reported strange lights appearing over the lake. These lights were also seen and reported on the beaches of Rossport and Schreibner. So, they, so we have three different testimonies about unusual lights being in the sky over the lake. But this is after the SS Bannock burn that that day had vanished. A massive search was conducted for the Bannock Burn, with tugboats com uh, combing the lake. Captain George Woods and his 22 men disappeared without a trace. That ship has never been found in Lake Superior. Scientific surveys were, were conducted in probes of Lake Superior in the year 1976 and again recently in 2002. But that vessel is not located in Lake Superior. So 1902 is like, like I told you guys, it's a really unusual year. And remember, Phoenix doesn't just bring all these, you know, aerial phenomena, the sky fallout, volcanoes with earthquakes and stuff like that. Phoenix brings changes to our world, little holographic edits. And I've been very specific about this through many of my presentations. Many times these natural disasters are covering something else up. So let's look into that. You tell me when this becomes to when when I get to the point of sounding like a lunatic. You tell me in the comments section when this list finally is agreeable to you that something unusual happened in 1902. Because what I'm about to read to you doesn't make sense. These, all these things should have been distributed over a long period of time in the develop, development of our modern world, but they weren't. They all appeared within, within a year of each other. So let's do it. These are all things that we use and utilize and rely on today in 2024. Okay, now <clears throat> we're going to start with government. U.S. government, the great seal of the United States of America, is very quietly changed from the Phoenix, which it was, the great seal was originally the Phoenix. Benjamin Franklin said it was the Phoenix. Many, many books claim it was the Phoenix, and it was, it was adopted in 1782. In 1902, they changed the Phoenix into a bald eagle, a carry-on bird. In 1902, the great seal of the United States was changed. On the other side of, of the great seal is the Great Pyramid, and it too is connected intrinsically to the year 1902, as we will see. 1902, the U.S. government suddenly starts the Census Bureau. A whole century of the 1800s, and you didn't think about creating a Census Bureau? Now, all of a sudden, the population of the United States is important to you. U.S. creates a Census Bureau to establish, to establish and measure and keep records on the population of the United States. 1902, in England, Queen Victoria dies. Her long reign, recognized as the height of the British international power, her death symbolizes the decline of England. At the same time, the United States is on the rise. Remember, the phoenix is always descriptive of the change of guard, of the mandate of heaven changing, governments. Same thing happened in 1764. Monarchies collapsed, and it, what, it, what was introduced? Democracies and republics. I've gone into, I've, I've talked to you, that's, that's subject for another video. Now, 1902, Bolshevik Jewish power over Britain Arthur, this is Arthur James Balfour, is made 
the prime minister of Great of Great Britain. He keeps this position till 1905. Now, his Jewish pedigree is totally kept secret. He is the force behind the Balfour Declaration that declared Jewish settlement rights in Palestine. Oh, yeah. 1902. Huge takeover, guys. 1902. The city of Washington, D.C. The Now, now you got to understand, the last true president, William McKinley, has gone. They killed him. 1902, we now have a Jewish president. Roosevelt. Now, Washington, D.C., the entire capital scheme is reworked, and a pentagram and Masonic symbols are all now employed. These did not exist in 1901. In 1902, they reworked Washington, D.C. to incorporate all these Masonic symbols. Remember, in prior presentations, I've showed you guys the proof. Freemasonry was created by who? You already know it. And the whole, the whole, the whole reason Freemasonry was created was to do exactly what this was. Here, they knew by war they would never be able to conquer the United States of America. They had to do it from within, and they did. 1902 is when the, is when they they rose in power here. Now, 1902, Paul Warburg traveled to the United States from Europe to lay down the foundation to the economic takeover of the U.S. economy by the European Rothschild banking dynasty to prepare the U.S. Rothschild agents in their conspiracy to foist the Federal Reserve System on the American people. That was 1902 when all that, all that was laid out and planned by Paul Warburg. 1902. Get this, guys. You know about the 411s. You know all about the dumbs. You know all know about the underworld underworld bases. You know the elite uh, have been populating the underworld for a long period of time. But get this, 1902, the national park system is created. I'm going to let you make it. But I'm going to keep hitting you with these data points until you're just going to have to admit this is way too coincidental. We're not there yet. 1902, the New Lands Reclamation Act of the United States is enacted. What does Phoenix do a lot on the big dates? It creates all new territories and new lands. Phoenix, just like Mother Shipton said, when the Sky Dragon returns, mankind's new dynasty will be on former ocean beds. It creates new lands. It's a New Lands Reclamation Act. We're going to get to Antarctica here in a minute because Antarctica has everything to do with 1902 as well. And the fact that the elite know that new lands, new real estate is about to be available. 1902, the U.S. and other European nations begin transporting plants to Antarctica with supporting infrastructure. I'm going to repeat that. In 1902, the United States and other European nations began sending ships to Antarctica. On those ships were all kinds of garden variety plants. They are sending, and this has been going on since 1902. It's never stopped. They have been sending all kinds of plant life with supporting infrastructures, greenhouses and all that, to specifically be grown in Antarctica. Why? Started in 1902. 1902 coal strike. This is the first time the U.S. government intervened as arbiter, and it literally began federal oversight of all kinds of companies and industries that were involved in natural resources. 1902 began the federal oversight of these companies. 1902, Texaco began in the month of May. 1902, as the Texas Fuel Company in Beaumont, Texas. Not even 30-minute drive for me right here. 35 minutes. So, straight down Internet 45. It's going to be longer than that. Straight down Internet 4, uh, Interstate 45 and take a left on 10. I'll get to Beaumont. Yeah, it would be about an hour, actually. All right, 1902, the Rand Daily Mail newspaper, magazine of Johannesburg, South Africa, was established. 
The Rand Daily Mail is a periodical dedicated to creating division between white European nations and those indigenous cultures of black Africans, aboriginals of Australia, and American Indians of North America. The Rand Daily Mail is a globalist funded periodical that is specifically designed to weaken white Western nations wherever their colonies are. And it worked. It literally it, it had everything to do with the apartheid movement. The Rand Daily Mail is a communist newspaper, and it's, it's, it's done a fantastic job at, at what it was supposed to do. Weaken the West. Now, 1902, the New York Stock Exchange building was redesigned by architect George Post after the original was torn down. Get this, guys. Here's the official story. The New York Stock Exchange closed only on two dates. One was 1865. Get that, guys. 1865. And it closed at the assassination of, of Abraham Lincoln, who opposed the financial takeover of the Rothschild, and he was killed for it. That is Abraham Lincoln. But the second time the New York Stock Exchange closed, and the only second, the only time since the first closure that it closed was the assassination of William McKinley, the last American president, in 1901. The official story is, is the New York Stock Exchange was completely torn down. I'm going to show you pictures of it here in a minute. It was completely torn down and rebuilt. A real funny story. Com, com, what I'm about, the pictures I'm about to show you, it's highly doubtful that they tore it down in 1901 and then, and then they built a new one in 1902. So they built it in 1902 and it was open, open to the public in 1903. Also in New York, another funny story. In New York, the Flatiron Building between Fifth Avenue and I can't remember, but it's a uh, it's the Cheese Wedge Building, famous building from Ghostbusters Twenty One. It's the world's first, uh, according to the historical record, it's the world's first skyscraper. It's the Flatiron Building in New York, built in 1901 and finished in 1902 and opened. Now, in the calendrics I've shown in prior videos that New York, New York's history began in 1626, which was a Phoenix year, 414 years before 2040. 414 years is the cursed earth cycle. It's 138 times three. Now, 138 years after the founding of, of New York by the Dutch, when they purchased that, that, that strip of land from the Manhattan Indians, 138 years later was the year 1764. And we're gonna get to that year in a little while in this video. 138 years after that was 1902, when all these changes happened in New York City. 130 years, 138 years after that is 2040. What happens in 2040? New York Stock Exchange is over. All skyscrapers are filled. We all this is what all the holography shows. The calendrics are very specific, and we're going to get into that. This video still has a long way to go. We got some profound stuff to show you. So, as one dam. A massive amount of architecture. The Aswan Dam in Egypt is completed in 1902. 1902. The cornerstone is laid for the famous New York Public Library. The cornerstone is laid in 1902 in the month of May. That's right. The New York Public Library in New York is the largest marble structure ever attempted in the United States. 1902, construction was at its height for the underground New York subway system, 1902. In 1902, the White House for the new president was completely modernized. I'm sure it was because after killing the real president, after killing the real president, they had to come in and they had to go through that whole White House to, to get rid of any spying devices, look for all the secret tunnels. They had to know everything about it. That was a complete government takeover by a whole different people. And they had to keep it secret. The American people largely did not know that the United States became a captured operation in 1902. 
All right. <clears throat> 1902. Goodwill is founded. Goodwill. Everybody knows. Everybody's got a Goodwill in their town. Goodwill's founded. One of the greatest scams in the world. Yeah. Donate your stuff to Goodwill. The poor don't get that stuff. That dude sells that stuff. He, you're giving him all kinds of things that he can sell. Yeah, it's crazy. Goodwill. Oh. Uh, Triple A, the American Automobile Association, is founded Triple A in 1902. I don't have my wallet with me. I'll show you my Triple A card. Yeah. 1902. Co Masonry begins in 1902. In America first, allowing women to join the Freemasonic Order. Mrs. Anne Besant is the first lady initiated into the Masons. I've read one of her books, Mrs. Mrs. Anne Besant. In England, in the same year of 1902, the first Co Masonry Lodge is consecrated. It's all by design. In 1902, y'all let me know when too many coincidences becomes no coincidence at all. 1902, Target is founded. Walgreens is founded. Nordstrom is founded. Kraft Foods is founded. Coca-Cola Bottling Company is founded. Coca-Cola was invented earlier, but the bottling company for Coca-Cola, 1902. Western Pacific Railroad, 1902. Gibson Guitar Company, 1902. J.C. Penney's, 1902. Uh, the 1902 was the first year of operation of the United States Steel Corporation of Charles Schwab and J.P. Morgan, a vast enterprise that propelled America into a frenzy of, of city, naval, and military building, a second win to the Industrial Revolution. 1902, Lamar Advertising. Most people have never heard of them. Lamar Advertising, one of the largest, if not the largest advertising agency in the entire world today. Current worth is $10 billion. What about the adhesive company? It's worth billions, founded in 1902. 3M, founded 1902. Can't make this stuff up. Turner Construction, founded 1902, becoming Turner Enterprises, becoming Turner Cable, becoming Turner Communications. You've all heard of it, founded 1902. Hmm. <clears throat> so, you guys, you guys have to understand, this is all put together by, by, by me, uh, a little bit of help. I got seven or eight of these from Gary Warmerdam. Some of y'all sent me emails. I've added a couple. Listen, if, if there was a, a group of people that just did a 1902 project, I think you would be astonished to find how many Fortune 500 companies have their original antecedents in 1902, but they were named something else. I'm just naming the ones that are familiar there's still a whole lot of other ones founded in 1902. I don't know who they are today. They've changed their names. You know how a lot of them do it. They change their names to conceal our identities. So, uh, now, there are many companies today. I know for a fact many of the companies that were founded in 1902 no longer go by those names. I've read the list. Gary Warmerdam provided me a list of them that showed me that they have merged with uh, U.S. Steel. They've merged with Halliburton. They've merged with GE. Yeah, they've now merged with the tech companies like Microsoft. So we don't know them anymore. But a lot of those companies that started in 1902 have now merged into the super giants. And we, it's, it's, it's hard to keep up with them. But one thing that's not that hard to keep up with is that I'm painting a picture for you that in 1902, something strange happened. And despite, despite the fact that the Phoenix phenomenon was highly localized in certain areas, the death toll was high. Yes, it was the highest death toll in American history for any volcanoes, in, in, in history for the Western world. We can shelve everything about the, the Phoenix as far as 
destruction, all the negative aspects of the Phoenix, we can shelve all that. Remember, Phoenix creates new edits into the holography. It either impedes development, you know, induces arrested development, <coughs> or it acts as a benefactor. <coughs> and it suddenly introduces all kinds of new things into the field to help perpetuate whatever, whatever the design of the scheme is. We are immortal souls flowing through a mathematical construct, and that construct is, it goes through many edits every 138 years. The list I just gave you isn't done. Many of the things that we enjoy today, right now, that make our lives possible and livable all started in 1902. Air conditioning was invented in 1902 by Carrier. Neon lighting appeared for the first time in 1902. Tungsten light bulb filaments that make all our lighting possible everywhere is 1902. Vacuum cleaners invented 1902. Radio receivers first appeared to the public in 1902. The teddy bear, the, the little toy teddy bear, 1902. Pepsi Cola is founded in the United States in 1902. George, uh, uh, Georges Claude in 1902 developed the first neon lamp. He was the first person to apply an electrical discharge to a sealed tube with, with, with neon as the gas, creating the first neon lamp. This was 1902. That's how he did it. James McKenzie, 1902, invented the first version of the lie detector test, the polygraph. What? 1902? Crayola crayons invented in 1902 by Benny and Smith. Bottle making machinery. Do I have a bottle in here? You guys know what a bottle is. Bottle, glass bottle making machinery invented in 1902. Changed everything. Now we can ship things in bottles. We can we can store things in bottles. We can put things on shelves and sell them better. Bottle making. Now bottles were made, but they were made by glass blowers. Now machines in 1902 started making bottles. Or did they? Or is that just the story? Stubblefield in 1902 makes the first public demonstration of radio. Totally changed our lives. Everything goes by radio now. So, oh, it was it was a uh, Hubert Cecil Booth who supposedly invented the vacuum cleaner in 1902. Oh, 1902, Gillette Razor, Gillette Razor Company is founded in 1902. And one of their first razors is the double-bladed disposable safety razor. Nothing new under the sun. We thought that thing was new. They've been making those since 1902. 1902 in Los Angeles, the, the world's first movie theater. The electric theater is opened in, in Los Angeles. 1902, movie theaters. Who to thunk? Who to thunk? 1902, guess who's born? Ray Kroc, founder of McDonald's Corp. Imagine that. Imagine that. It's crazy. So, let's see. Oh, I'm not done. Not done at all. Not done at all. Oh, yeah, we got, we got some good ones. We got some good ones. 1902, the very first fast food restaurant came out in the month of June. A cafeteria-styled automat in Philadelphia. Whole meals were obtained from a coin-operated slot and glass displays. You walked up to the machine, you looked at the meal that you wanted, you put your coin in there, rent the slot, and it would give you your whole meal on a plate. Isn't that crazy? 1902, fast food. Invented. 1902. The very first successful brain surgery. It was by a Dr. Harvey Cushing. 1902, Heaviside in England and Kennelly, a British American, discovered that an atmospheric layer caused radio waves to bounce back to Earth, making it possible to have long-distance transmission of signals. What a coincidence, 1902. Another coincidence, civil unrest in Ireland 
20,000 Irishmen in Phoenix Park of Dublin demonstrated against the British government in 1902. 1902, the musical The Wizard of Oz debuted. How odd is that? How many, how many rabbit holes have we, uh, we're going to go through studying the Wizard of Oz? Wizard of Oz debuts 1902. Also, a movie, A Trip to the Moon, debuts in 1902. It's the very first science fiction film. Also, 1902, The Hunchback of Notre Dame debuts. You know what? I told you guys I was going to show you that film. And I'm going to show it to you right now. I am. I'm going to show you that. Oh, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. The You've seen the 1902 where the little rocket takes off and the people get out the rocket and they're on the moon. It looks like cheese and the moon's got a face. It's the very first scientific film, guys. But I do have a treat for you. Some of you have seen this. But I'm going to show you this one minute and 35 second uh Video, it's from 1902. Let's see if I can find it. I don't think I'm presenting, so I see what I got to do. I got to take it all out of the file. I got to take it out of the file. I see. That's why y'all didn't see that earlier. I literally have to take a video out of the file, put it on my desktop so you can see it. That's what I'm going to do. Just like that. All right. I'm going to share this video for you guys while I take a real fast little pee break. Nineteen oh two. Man, that was awesome. All right. That's nice. That's a nice little little break video. Let me remove that. Oh yeah, it's going down. We got a lot, we got a lot more to go. Face diaper, you behave. All right. Okay. Oh, we still got we still got more to go. It's crazy about the Wizard of All Oz, a trip to the moon, the first science fiction. It's crazy. All right, Hunchback of Notre Dame. Uh, debuts in the opera. It's crazy. In sports culture, in 1902, the very first Rose Bowl was game was played. The Tour de France. Get this, the Tour de France, the greatest bicycle race of all time, is founded in 1902. 
at the same time that American Football Dome uh, Coliseum is founded. Come on, guys. All right. So 1902, Edgar Casey begins miraculous healings. You see, after diagnosing his own throat malady under hypnosis in 1901, the amazing sleeping prophet, that's what they called him, Edgar Casey, who he was born in 1877, but he began diagnosing the ailments of others and predicting uh, the future while under hypnosis. Today, his organization, ARE, the uh, uh, was it, Association of Research and Enlightenment, something like that, but it's Edgar Casey's association. Um, it's uh, ARE is still publishing books on his readings and still providing his works to the public. That was 1902 when his when his like when his awakening happened to where he could heal, he could diagnose people and 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 uh lead which would lead to their healing. Uh, that was 1902 when that happened. Here it is, 2024, and he still has a, a foundation that's going strong. A lot of people are still into Edgar Casey. So, <clears throat> like I said, y'all bear with me. I told you it's gonna be long. Now I got some pictures to show you, and we're still not done after that. Let's find these pictures. Share screen. Always something. All right. No, that's not it. Why isn't this working? Okay. All right. You guys should be able to see this. Let me go back here. Okay. The day the world ended, May 7th, 1902. Okay. That's just a cover of a popular book. Here's, here's Stonehenge. Sir Norman Lockyer studied Stonehenge in 1901, and in 1902, uh, he and others have determined that the heel stone you see here, there's another stone way out here. Heel means sun. It was specifically designed to draw attention to the month of May. That's really interesting, guys. You see the date at the top? Sir Norman Lockyer said that, that uh, Stonehenge was built in 1680 BC, but he's wrong. That's Stonehenge three. Stonehenge was built in 3163 uh, BC, somewhere around then. It was destroyed in 2239 BC at the Great Flood. Stonehenge two was them re-erecting it after that event, that Phoenix event. When they re-erected it, they added a bunch of these smaller stones. Then they turn around and uh, uh, 1687 BC was the Ogygian deluge. So he's dead on the money for the erection of Stonehenge, but it was the third time, and he dated it 1680, which is probably dead on accurate, seven years after the Ogygian deluge. Let's see. Uh, I don't know. 1902, hundreds of billions of tons of red mud, dust, reddish rains, blanket the world, covered islands and ships. A new star appeared, some believing it to be a planet. Uh, bringing forth also a new comet attended by earthquakes and volcanism. In May, cities around the world reported a blackening of the sky. The mud flood researchers will do many, uh, will find many of their documented modern resets were in 1902. A vast amount of effort and resources has gone into erasing this event from the historical record. We're not done. I still got more lists to go through. 1919, Charles Fort concluded that after exhaustive research that in 1902 and 1903, we passed through the remains of a powdered world left over from an ancient interplanetary dispute, brooding in space like red resentment ever since. The other dark age of the year 1902. New York, New York, originally founded in 1626, a Phoenix year. New York will be destroyed in its 414th year, which is the cursed earth period in 2040, also by Phoenix, also found in Nostradamus' prophecies, which we're about to get into. This is the anti kythera computer recognized as a artifact in 1902 from a shipwreck uh, uh, that was salvaged in 1901. This is the one that has the, the, the little Greek, Greek calendar on it. It's a marker. 
Look at the sophistication. This is 2,000 years old. These boxes were said to be designed by the Greeks, like Thales, to predict periods, of astronomical periods, forward and backward in time. Guys, I'm about to show you something that's going to blow your minds about 1902. This device was designed to measure periods forward and backward in time. Here it is again. This is the anti cathera device. Specifically, the, the marker specifically is on 583 B.C. Robert de Sola Price, the researcher who studied this for 20 years, thought it was 584 B.C. Uh, Zechariah Sitchin believes it was 586 because he's Jewish and he wants to, he wants to uh, link it to the fall of Jerusalem. Here it is again. 2,000-year-old shipwreck. This computer. Oh, we don't need to get there yet. Here is the Anunnaki Nur calendar, and there is the year 162. Remember, in 1902, an Olmec artifact in the Olmec date is equal to our year of 162. That artifact was uh, is describing this year. A disease killed off whole communities from China to the provinces of the Roman Empire, initiating a dark age over Eastern Hemisphere. Discovered in 1902. Oh, 1903. What is all this? This is all different weird stuff that happened in 1903. We still had a lot of dust falling from the sky in 1903. 1902. Shadow bands are a solar eclipse mystery because not everybody sees them. Isn't that interesting? Shadow bands are scientifically documented that some humans can see them while others can't. These are lines across the sky caused by the sun. Crazy. And here it is, according to George Chambers' book, The Story of Eclipses, 1902. The Anglo-Boer War ends in 1902. This is, this is South America. This is the uh, Johannesburg and all that. First skyscraper, New York, 1902, Cheese Wedge. The Fuller Building, called Flatiron Building, by the Fuller Fuller Construction Company. There it is right there, 1902. I don't know when this picture was taken. It says 1902. There's scaffolding there. For anybody who thinks it's a lot older, there, there's scaffolding, so I don't know. We got trolleys down here with rail systems. Um, oh, we have uh, buggies. Not a single car can be seen. These are all horse buggies. I don't see a single car. They're on rails. I see a bunch of horse buggies. This may be a car. We got a car. We do have a car, a primitive car here. All right, 1902. Oh, look at this. Imagine that, 1903. Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion. And yes. The Jewish controlled publishing world, even at, at, at the early date, was already putting stuff out saying that this is a hoax, it's all bullshit, it's not true. But there's a lot of a lot of people say that this is an actual document because when you read this document, it's exactly how the world is today. They did it. They took hey, 1902, they've been in control of the United States of America. And that's the only reason why the last hundred years or so makes so much sense to me. New Lands Reclamation Act, 1902. American Commercial Invasion of Europe, 1902. Biolo uh, bi uh, Biologics Control Act of 1902, also known as the Virus Toxin Law. Wow. Amazing. The Winding Up of Companies and Reconstruction, 1902. What does the winding up mean? When were you wound down? Why was winding up all of a sudden necessary in 1902? The Dick Act of 1902, also known as the Efficiency of Militia Bill. Wow. It invalidates all so-called gun control laws. That's interesting. I wonder if any of the patriots know about the Dick Act of 1902. Children of the Frost, 1902, Jack London, famous literature. 
Here's the Rand Daily Mail. I just told you about it. Com it's like a communist uh, deal. The Tale of Peter Rabbit, 1902. More famous literature. The Theory of Optics, 1902. Oh, I already told you about all this. This is New York Stock Exchange, 1865, all that. New York Stock Exchange closed only when the two presidents were assassinated. It's amazing. And then all of a sudden, the New York Stock Exchange is totally rebuilt, 1902. Look at that. Look at that. Interior of New York's, New York's historic stock exchange. Look at that. This is the 1902 version. No, no, excuse me. This is the 1800s version. This is what it looked like in the 1800s. And look, even on the bottom, it says torn down. I think I got another one. I got it. Yeah, right there. Torn down. Torn down in 1901. Do you really believe that they tore this structure down? Look at that. Look at that. Do you really believe they tore that structure down? Look at that. That's the original 1800 version right there. They tore that down to replace it with this, which is an illustration compared to a photograph. There's a photograph of the original. That's a photograph of the original from the 1800s. Look at this. Here's a new one. New York Stock Exchange. Hard to believe, guys. 1902. Public Library. Look at that public library. Look how many levels. Look at all those books in the New York Public Library. It's like nine levels. Okay, eight levels in one basement. New York Public Library. It's a lot of books. Oh, there it is, 1902, established 1782, the Phoenix. Here's the original seal until 1902 when they changed it to a bald eagle. That's a Phoenix. United States was taken over in 1902 by, by foreign power, but, but it was made to look like everything was continuing as normal. That's how they've been able to pull everything off, like the, like the New Deal. Like the Federal Reserve, IRS, all this, all this, all this was done by design. Make the patriots feel like they're still in control of their country so you can fleece them for their wealth. Look how short all the other buildings are compared to this. The flat iron building. For world's supposedly to the historical record, it's the world's first skyscraper at 21 stories. It's Fifth Avenue. There it is again. Nice photo. Uh-oh, extra, extra. President McKinley assassinated, twice shot in the stomach and one in the groin. This is interesting. It just mentions a bunch of stuff in 1902 that didn't really make the news, but it's in this book. Yeah. It's talking about wars in the Balkans and all kinds of things going on in Serbia and things came to a halt. Uh, uh, villagers were massacred. The, uh, the Turks were doing things. And all of a sudden, natural disasters uh, uh, worldwide. But it doesn't go into detail what those natural disasters were. It just says they're worldwide. Then it talks about a, a 1902 earthquake in the Caucasus. Yeah, guys. Uh, let's see. The French, there, it mentioned St. Pierre, the, the French, uh, the Martinique. Month of May, Mount Pele. It mentions all that. St. Vincent, so frere. Now it mentions something I didn't even know about. Egypt, 20,000 people died of cholera. And the British authorities were blamed because they put disinfectants in the water. The Egyptians said they were poisoned. That sounds familiar. All right. Just more newspaper clippings from 1902 about stuff falling from the sky. Tsunami. El Salvador tsunami 1902 1902 April 11, over the United States massive dust storm in Illinois New York New Jersey Connecticut Pennsylvania mud showers guys when you look up 19 you got to look up the independent things in 1902 to find these things cuz you can't you can't you just use a search engine to say disasters of 1902 these things don't pull up you got to search for them it's crazy. Phenomena observed at the lunar eclipse of 1902. 
huh? I haven't been through a lot of this stuff. I remember I put this here for a reason. They saw something in the sky when the moon. It's talking about the inner red portion down here. I don't know, man. You can screenshot this and study it. I'm trying to get through this video. Mount Kimbla disaster. I didn't even know about it. I didn't even know anything about 1902. Uh, massive coal mine explosion. Killed 96 men in Wales. Or New, no, I'm sorry, New South Wales, Australia. That's a terrible disaster. Here's, here's a newspaper article about the new star that appeared in 1902. A scientist had to rescind their statements. Yeah, they real quick. They're real quick to say, oh, yeah, pontificating. Oh, yeah, that right there, it's 30 light years away. And then a month later, they got to eat crow and they got to rescind their statement because that object started moving. And if it's 30 years light, light years away, it couldn't move that fast and get that close to us that quickly. Then it started giving off appendages. Yeah. Two months later, people were saying that it looked like a structure in the sky. Yeah. Scientists told you it was 30 light years away. Uniformitarian bastards. Let's see. 1902, month of May, dust storm, uh, mud showers around the Great Lakes, Atlantic coast. Dude, it was everywhere. It was all over the world. But it, there's there was nobody reporting it as all over the world. They're all reporting it in local areas. I don't even know what the meat war of 1902 was. That's something I got to look into. I have no idea. More, more stuff on natural disasters. A whole bunch of buffalo were killed. 1909, I don't, yeah. Outbreak in 1902. Cholera killed 100,000 inhabitants in two years. Locusts. I don't know, guys. This is crazy. All throughout the arc, a bunch of buffalo died. He keeps saying natural disasters, but really not telling us what they are. A terrible earthquake at Shamaka. Uh, that would be the Caucasus, 1902. Uh, wow, seismic events in Azerbaijan. I don't know, guys. This is a lot. There's a lot here. There's a lot here. So, oh, this is more on Illinois in 1902. People who were on the street were covered with mud spots. Clothes hanging on the lines were smeared. Oh, I know that. I know the housewives were pissed. 1902. 1902. A dust storm in April. Unheard of thing. A deluge of dirt came in the month when the earth should be saturated with moisture. It was remarkable for being the worst dust storm in this in this section at any season for some years. Uh, from the Republican, April 12th, 1902. Muddy skies, Pennsylvania, April 12th, 1902. Here's an actual photograph of the red mud that fell from the sky. All right, we got more. Yakult Burn is a collective name for dozens of fires in Washington State and Oregon in September, killing 70 people in 1902. Fire from the sky. Oh, listen to this. 1902, Albert Einstein and his wife, Maleva Merrick, had a daughter in 1902 named Lysiril. But it was before they were married. Her existence is only discovered in 1986. Albert Einstein is believed to have never met her, and what happened to her is a mystery. Albert Einstein, being Jewish, had a had a daughter, and they named her Lysiril. So, what did he do to his daughter? It wasn't even discovered till till 1986. What happened to his baby girl? That's a mystery. Wow. Crazy. All right, so I don't know how many we go. What's this? Pan-American Exposition, 1900. Oh, the Pan-American Exposition, 1901. That's where they killed, that's where they killed uh, President McKinley. Anti-Kythera computer, anti-Kythera computer. That's it. We're done with that file. All right, we're done with that file. All right, I'm back. Two hours and 47 minutes. Let's go, guys. Thank you for your donations. I'm sorry I can't acknowledge you. I'm, I'm, in, my, I'm in my zone. We still got more ground to cover, guys. Still got more ground to cover. So uh, we're going to hit this video.
video clip about 1903. We're moving into 1903, and then I'm going to sum up 1901 with some stuff that's going to blow your mind. I promise you, you're going to have mind explosions about this. First, let's finish 1903 because it's connected to 1902. You need to know what happened. All right. Present. I'm going to have to pull it out that file. I'm getting used to it. It's making me take take videos out of files in order to share them. Good thing I, I, I labeled every video. All right. On February 14th, Valentine's Day, 1903, the blackest of darkness over Australia occurred, followed by a deluge of dust and mud upon 40 towns in New South Wales and Victoria. The material that fell in Australia fell about as enormously as that that fell in the dusts of Europe. It was a tremendous blanketing of dust, dirt, and mud straight from the skies over Europe. For several days, the south of England was a dumping ground from somewhere else. Red dust fell as far away as the Canary Islands and on the, uh, on the 19th. On the 27th, this fall of dust continued in Belgium, Holland, Germany, and Austria. A vessel reported that dust fell into the Atlantic midway between Southampton and Barbados. In England, it was estimated at 10 million tons of fallen matter and again 50 tons per square mile in Australia alone. Also, at Switzerland, Russia, and from February to March 1903, dust and discolored rains fell along the western coasts of Africa. Fort wrote that the matter is variously described as brick dust, red dust colored, as reddish raindrops and gray sand, quite red, yellow, and brown. Chemists of the time proclaimed that tests of the red dust revealed 9.08% organic matter or as much as 36% organic matter depending on the sample that was taken. As 1902 was called a dark age, 1903 is the other year specifically commented on by Fort. He said, I think myself that in 1903, we passed through the remains of a powdered world left over from an ancient interplanetary dispute brooding in space like red resentment ever since, unquote. Though the reports came from all over the, all over the world, Fort notes that the astronomers in 1902 and 1903 remained quiet, loathing to ponder an origin for dust outside of our world, while meteorologists pontificated that storms kicked up African sand from the Sahara. Fort searched the weather reports of the time. There were no storms in the Sahara, in Africa. He also shows that the sand of the Sahara is white, not red. Nor were any volcanic eruptions occurring in 1903. However, Charles Ford does note something unusual. The appearance of a new star. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, guys. 1903. We still have some carryover in 1903. Let me uh see what I can find here. Let's see. I need to... I'm real close to being done with that. All right. All right, let me get to 1903. 1903 is not going to take long. It's just a carryover. Remember, our year begins, our actual year begins as soon as February is over. The end of the the end of the year was the Februm. It's F E B R U U M. The Februm. February was the last was the last month. This is easily shown. I've already told you guys. It's, I, I've, I've stumbled on word. I've stumbled over it a few times because it kind of gets you. But you already know September, October, November, and December are supposed to be our ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth months. But they're named the seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth months. In Latin, and that's because January is the 11th month, February is the 12th month, New Year starts with March. This is the ancient system. This is why we still have two weeks left in 2023. 2024 begins 
as soon as March begins. This is how the Phoenix years work as well. Actually, the Phoenix years are vernal equinox. March 21st is the beginning of the year. All right, let's see. Nineteen oh three. So in nineteen oh three, the Lowell Observatory reported seeing a cloud like object near Mars. This is in the Royal Astronomical Minutes as well. In archaeology in nineteen oh three, Thomas Gann officially commissioned to investigate the archaic uh, uh, site of Lubainton. Lubainton, remember. I've talked about this in prior presentations. This is an ancient pre-Mayan city. It's a pyramid city before the Maya. Lubanton is where the famous crystal skull was found. The mysterious crystal skull that has a movable jaw, anatomically correct skull. It's almost as if somebody fossilized into pure crystal a real human skull. We don't know how you can get a movable jaw from that crystal. That's amazing. So, uh, Thomas Gahn is officially commissioned to investigate this area, to check it all out in 1903. So, I find this interesting because it's 1903, and 1903 is very close to 1902, and it is, it is, it is understood that in 1687 B.C., Lubanton was completely wiped out and destroyed in the Ogaijian Deluge. You know, it's mentioned in my 1687 B.C. data. So, it was destroyed by the Phoenix. Here it is. Within a year, we got this guy exploring the ruins. This is before the crystal skull was found. 1903, remember 1902, the Hypogeum on Malta, which was destroyed by the Phoenix in 2239 BC, it was discovered. But now in 1903, the Jesuit priest Emmanuel Magri, he began excavating the many thousands of human skeletons that were found inside the Hypogeum, some with bizarre elongated skulls. He found pottery, other small objects, and diluvian sediment deposits. It's like hundreds of people ran into there for safety, and then mud came in and buried and entombed them. Probably a pretty horrific death. Probably pretty fast. But, uh, and uh, under all the pressure of the Mediterranean. Because remember, 2239 B.C., the Mediterranean Sea was created in a day. That's why the Sphinx got buried in sediments and water for 340 years until the Sea of Triton drained out, creating the Sahara Desert, and then the Sphinx was visible again. But now it's really damaged. But the pyramids weren't damaged because they're covered in 100-inch thick white limestone casing blocks, which were only removed in the last 700 years. Now, uh... What's crazy is uh, this dude mysteriously died. The dude that, that excavated the hypogeum and he found the normal humans that were a little bit bigger and with elongated skulls. Why? Because it was destroyed in 2239 BC when the vapor canopy collapsed. The day the sky fell, the great flood. They were just normal humans, but there were vapor canopy humans and they, and they were bigger and they had long skulls. So, uh, 1903. Oh, this guy ended up dead. This guy ended up dead. This this archaeologist, he ended up dead. His excavation notebooks and writings on the hypogeum vanished. No one knows what happened to that dude or his research. So, uh, uh, 1903. Um, Assyria excavations begun at the capital city. Remember, in 1902, excavations began in, in Assyria at Nineveh. Now, the capital city of the ancient empire of Assyria is Asher. Asher, they begin in 1903, they begin digging Asher up. 1903, Dr. Alice Herlicka, one of, the one of the first curators of physical anthropology of the U.S. National Museum, later called the Smithsonian Institution, Institution Natural Museum of Natural History, he, uh, he invents a ridiculous theory in this year that all the Indian tribes of North America reached North America from Asia by an Alaskan land bridge tens of thousands of years ago. Total, total BS. But well, he invented the land bridge theory back then, and they're sticking to their guns today. 1903, Mary Curie creates artificial radiation. 
radiation not naturally found in nature. 1903. 1903 is the first year on record for what is widely known today as livestock cattle mutilations. So in the month of August, horse cattle and sheep mutilations occurred all over Staffordshire, England. Guilty men were sought for by hunting party parties because at that time it was not common knowledge that animal mutilations were done by a non-human agency or by an agency that was technologically advanced from the underworld. Remember, the cattle mutilations are really weird. Whole areas are like surgically inserted, organs removed. It's very unusual. 1903. In 1903, the Jewish Bolsheviks of Russia established the Jewish Bolshevik Party, which gains the majority in Russia due to a split at the London Conference of the Russian Social Democratic Party. Now, in Russia, these Bolsheviks who have already taken over the United States secretly, they are now in Russia getting ready to take over the United, take over the, the uh, Romanov Christian Russian Empire and turn it into the Soviet USSR atheist state. And they succeed, but at first it took, it took them, it was a lot harder for them to succeed against the Russians than it was uh, uh, America, United States. 1903, Vladimir Lenin founded the Bolshevik faction of the Russian Social Democratic Workers' Party in London. Remember, you, I, you can't remember, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. For those of you who watch my Archaics TV videos, the Hats Off series, I've already explained to you that London is already a captured operation. It belongs to the Bolsheviks, just like Washington, Washington D.C. belongs to the Bolsheviks, just like the Vatican belongs to the Bolsheviks. They, they have already taken over all of that. That's why London is called the city. That's why Washington, D.C. is independent of the United States of America. That's why Vatican City is different than Italy. The Italian government has no, no jurisdiction there. That's why the Pope wears a very small hat. Now, 1903, Vladimir Lenin founded that in London. 1903, Henry Ford founded the Ford Motor Company in the United States. And my personal favorite, Harley Davidson, is founded in 1903. I need to do another motorcycle video. It's been a while. It's just cold right now. 1903, Orville and Wilbur Wright at Kitty Hawk demonstrate the first machined man flight in North Carolina. 1902 and 1903, all these things happen at the same time. It's amazing. In 1903, in sports culture, the first World Series baseball game is won, and it's won by the Boston Red Sox. The first World Series within a year of the first football stadium. Yeah, within a, yeah at the same time as the first bicycle race in France. It's crazy, crazy. Harvard Stadium is built in 1903. The first stadium specifically built for American football. It's built in Boston, Harvard. Almost 40,000 people capacity. It's crazy. The very first game is in 1903. Dartmouth scores twice, Harvard zero. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. All right, so we're getting down, we're getting down to a, to a summary. We still got like 20 minutes left, I think. Something like that. Maybe. So let, let's uh let's get these Nostradamus file out now. This is what we're doing now. So put all this up. Okay, I'm done with all that. Close that. Yeah, guys, this is, I told you I had a surprise for you at the end of this video, and I, I'm serious. All about 1902. We're proving 1902. We are on schedule. The calendar has not been changed and modified. All the events of 1902 prove that we are on We are on the timeline, which means this really is 2023 about to turn 2024, which means this really is the year 5917 about to turn 5918, which means that the second seal really is about to be broken, which means that the sixth seal is truly the month of May in the year 2040. Everything is on schedule. And all the confusion and all the all the paradigms being foisted by people who don't have the research to back it up is just that. It's to promote confusion. But remember, it doesn't matter the calendrical system, the culture, the religion, none of that. Phoenix is the keeper of the calendar. And we're going to prove that in this video. I'm going to show it to you. All right. So I need to find this. Okay. Nostradamus. Okay. I'm sorry. Nostradamus file. I got a share file. 
Let me go. Let me get to it. Share screen. Share screen. So where is? I thought it would give me an option to find it. Instead, I got to do this. All right. Present. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, yeah, I'm sharing screen. I can see it. I can tell. I can definitely tell. I'm looking for Calendrix. There it is. Thought I had all that separated. Got to keep them separated. Da -da 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 -da. All right, let's make, make sure I'm sharing the screen right. All right. I know you guys can see that. Yeah, you can see that. So, this is a copy of my book. This is out of my book, Nostradamus and the Planets of Apocalypse. I'm showing you right here in Nostradamus' letter to King Henry of France. He relates that in his pre-flood chronological studies that he found that there was 1242 years from Adam to Noah. This arbitrary sum is too specific to ignore. Now, it reveals that there were historical chronologies available to the prophet that had since been lost. He's describing nine, or back then I said orbits, guys. I don't believe in that no more. But nine appearances of the phoenix. Nine times 138 is 1242 years. Now, there's another number here. It's the number 414. 414, th three cursed earth periods. 414 times three is 1242. We need, we need, we need to, to uh, remember that because it's going to become relevant real quick when I show you these other, other deals. <clears throat> so Nostradamus historian David Ovason in his Secret of Nostradamus wrote that the prophet employed the lunar timeline of, uh, of Trethemus in Quatrain 148, which reads, the sun will take the remaining days and then is accomplished the end of my prophecy. Now, David Ovason believes that this quatrain pinpointed the year 1901 as the beginning of the last days of the sun. What is all the ancient American calendars about? The stone of the fifth sun, 22-ton Toltec relic that shows the four sun ages, the four 552-year periods. Every time a massive destruction of the world happens by Phoenix, every 552 years, it's the stone of the fifth sun. The fifth sun was different. Four suns had passed on time. The fifth sun has been a long time, according to the Toltecs, and then later adopted by the Aztecs. David Ovason is linking this to those sun prophecies, but he says 1901 begins the last days of the sun. Now, <clears throat> also, we have this incident. In 1994, members of the Italian National Library in Rome discovered buried in the archives a formerly unknown and unpublished manuscript fully illustrated with paintings and text personally done by the prophet Nostradamus. After studying this work, the Roman researcher and Nostradamus expert Ottavio Cesar Ramadi published in his book, Nostradamus, the Lost Manuscript, the following passage, written by the prophet, which refers to the year 1903. Many will die before the phoenix dies, until 670 his dwelling shall endure. What? This is a code. Nostradamus wrote everything in codes, guys. And my book is about that, showing you that he even knew the number 138. And he identified it as the phoenix and the number and the month of May. And he identified the year 2040. That's what my, the subject matter of my book is about. But here's a code that you need to understand. Many will die before the phoenix dies until 670 his dwelling shall endure. Everything is self-referencing with Nostradamus. He already admitted to a knowledge of, of the cursed earth period of 414 years. He knew that. 
It's in that number, 1242, because the actual number is 1656. But he didn't say that. The pre-flood time period is 1656 years, which I've shown many times. But Nostradamus specifically wrote that it was 1242 years, which is wrong. But then again, it's right. Let me show you. Many will die before the phoenix dies. Un until 670, his dwelling shall endure. What or oh, what does this mean? I'm going to show you. 670 divided by phi, which is 1.618, is exactly 414.0. 414 years is a cursed earth period. 138 year, the 138 Phoenix periodicity times three is 414. Over and over and over, Nostradamus demonstra demonstrates these, these calendrical codes in his quatrains. In my book, if you haven't read my book, Lost Scriptures, I mean, uh, Nostradamus and the Planets of Apocalypse, you're not going to know how he did this, but he dated his quatrains. The actual dates for the prophecies themselves reveal that the month of May for the year 2040, it's going down. It's the Phoenix. And he perfectly describes all the Phoenix phenomenon episodes of the past as happening in that year 2040. Here it is. Until 670, his dwelling shall endure. Right there. 670 divided by 5 is 414. Nostradamus did this a lot, guys. Now. We're not done by any stretch of the imagination with that. There's another Nostradamus quote I'm missing. Okay, we got that one. Got that one. Here it is. As seen in the prior chapter, it is believed that Nostradamus named the Phoenix and associated it with the year 1903. It is also known that the coat of arms for the family of Nostradamus was a shield with two solar symbols and the head of a phoenix. Though Nostradamus was no doubt heavily influenced by his Judeo-Christian Catholic background, remember, he was Jewish. These are not enough to explain his prophetic precision. He was a self-proclaimed descendant of the Israelite tribe of Ishakar. And interestingly, guys, you can't make this stuff up. But according to the Bible, the Old Testament, the men of Ishakar were keepers of the times. You can't make that up. Just like Phoenix is keeper of the calendar. The men of Ishakar, Nostradamus, keeper of the times. Oh, yeah, we're not done. I got more to show you on this. It's amazing. The final Nostradamus piece right here. <coughs> Found in 1994 by Cesar Ramadi, published a former, a former unknown Nostradamus manuscript. Listen to this. The senseless people will be reawakened by Jesus from their illusions, six lenses, and a telescope. And I have a true key, which is even more important to pass down. I see coming in my dreams heavy legends receiving the wave of the sun. The law of the wolves is there to lay blame when it is foreseen that the whole Western world will die. I shall know different times. This is a prophecy code for the year 2046, which is also mentioned by Nostradamus in his quatrains. In 2046, the calendars will change by necessity because the year will no longer be 365.24 days. According to the book of Revelation, the day, the night, the sun, the moon, and the stars, all five things are reduced by a third, meaning our world now has no, no longer a 24-hour day, but a 16-hour day. Also, that all these are reduced by a third means a vapor canopy is coming back. Visibility will be completely reduced. The quickening will happen during, during the Great Tribulation. 2046 is the return of the Nemesis X object. 6.5 years after the Phoenix phenomenon brings a new vapor canopy. So vapor canopies are caused by nothing other than 
atmospheric blanketing of the red dust of Phoenix at the same time that the lower mesosphere is filled with ash and pumice from volcanoes. Now, what do we know about the what do we know about the phoenix? Well, I'm going to show you. This is an ordinary phoenix. This is a this is an ordinary phoenix in a construct. Here's the remember Nostradamus says he has the keys. Here's the here's the the sun and the moon at the bottom and the world. The phoenix is above the construct. The phoenix is moving through these constellations. Here is a here is a phoenix looking toward the future. But you have to understand, Nostradamus and those in the in the 15, 14, 14, 15, 16, and 1700s, they understood this construct better than we do today. We've been dumbed down. This is an ordinary phoenix looking at the construct that does not give up the secrets that Nostradamus possesses. I'm going to show you. Here's a here's a double-headed phoenix which is not looking just at the future, it's also looking at the past. And in order to understand how Phoenix on the construct, there's the world, how Phoenix moves through the constellations in the heavens and periodically resets the world, in order to understand this mystery, you have to look into the past. The Phoenix burns the world and rebuilds new worlds on the ashes of the old. It brings both good and evil every time that it comes. The phoenix, the phoenix looks into the past and looks into the future. And if you want to understand its secrets, you have to understand that the past is a predicate for the future in the construct, not for the individual. And in this construct, we are shown right here, as I've showed you guys in the past, there's the key to understanding. We have this half mirrors this half. The past and the future mirror each other in this construct, except for one tiny detail. That detail is this right angle line. That is a right angle line that touches the phoenix right there and touches this one parallel. What is this parallel? Well, first of all, it touches the phoenix looking into the future. It's a right angle line. This is Freemason Jewish knowledge. That parallel is the key to deciphering the past and the future. That parallel is 138 right there in the past. 138 years into the future is 138 right here. Oh, I this, is, this isn't what I was telling you I was going to show you. I'm about to show you some stuff that's going to blow your mind. But that right there is the key to understanding Nostradamus, who is Jewish, and the Freemason material. I have a whole video called Occultist Mysterium. Occultist Mysterium. You need to watch that video. It's three hours, and I go through hundreds of images where I, where I show you all this material that's hiding the phoenix in plain sight and what it does. So the forward and backward nature of our time space is very evident. It's very evident. Here's a chart I did. Let's see. What's the date? Look at that. Brashears 07 on the bottom. I drew that in prison in 2007. This is the Great Flood showing how the how the Great Flood was a great division in time, an isometric epicenter where it was equidistant. Look at that. 792 years in the past, 792 years in the future. 1,200 years in the past, 1,200 years in the future, 1656, 16, 3,000, 3,000. Here's all these ancient calendars showing how the Phoenix phenomenon is literally, there's the 414 years. Look, there they are. This is what we're about, I'm about to show you about these 414 years. Here they are. It goes all the way over here, 1902. Showing you the forward, backward nature, the palindromic nature of our reality. Nostradamus knew it. Nostradamus specifically said that he looked at a pool of water to divine the future. It's genius. Absolutely genius. Here it is. Many will die before the phoenix dies. All right. Still got more to show. Got to find it. Just got to find it. All right. I don't know what that was. That's nothing. All right, so let's get out of there. Make sure. I think I got another video. I got another video clip to show you guys. Okay. 
Oh, I do. I do have another video clip. Let's do it. We're almost done. Got another video clip. Let me find it. I might have to remove this. Escape. Stop screen. Make sure y'all still with me here. All right. As my as my brother Martin says, now we're now it's down to the juicy juicy. So I spent three and a half years on YouTube showing you guys 138 year periodicity of the Phoenix phenomenon, showing you what happened every 138 years. And yes, there's a few years we don't have, but there's many years that we have a whole lot of. It's to be expected. I've also shown you videos about all the libraries in ancient times that have been burned and how we just can't. There's sometimes civilizations were destroyed and nobody was left behind to record the destruction. But we see it in archaeology. So all this, I've got I've got hundreds of videos about calendrics and multitudes of them are about 1902. But if you really want to see the proof that 1902 is the Phoenix year and that it's on the 138 year period, you want to see the absolute proof that we are still in in the right calendar and we have factored it all right then you're gonna have to look at it isometrically watch this video listen to this video and look at this chart undeniable and after this little video clip i'm going to show you how it leads to 1764 and what happened and how that's connected to 2040 it's amazing it's amazing absolutely amazing here's the next video clip all right, let me find it. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to put it also. Oh, this little system really pissing me off. Now I know in the future, don't have any videos in files. Go ahead and put them on your desktop. All right, I'm gonna slap that on my desktop. Got it? Now I can share it. All right, let's do it. Present. In 1871, in Franco-Prussian War, a coalition of German states defeated France and ended with the unification of Germany, 31 years before 1902. But 31 years after 1902 was 1933 when Adolf Hitler is awarded Chancellor to unify Germany and initiate the Third Reich. In 1869, the U.S. federal government abolished the white disenfranchisement laws that gave over white properties to blacks after the Civil War because of the financial abuses that were occurring, and the KKK was dissolved by federal pressure. This was 33 years before 1902, but 33 years after 1902 was 1935, when the Nazis condemned the Jews for not financial malpractices and ordered them out of their country, arresting many of them. In 1866, a carefully planned war for the unification of Germany, the Seven Weeks War, was carried out, involving Prussian ascendancy over Austria. This was 36 years before 1902, and 36 years after 1902, in the year 1938, Germany annexes Austria for the unification of the Third Reich. In 1865, the American Civil War ended 37 years before 1902, and 37 years after 1902 was 1939, when World War II began, with Germany invading Poland. How is this related aside from both being wars? First, both Germans and Polish immigrants and descendants of immigrants fought in the war between the states. A high concentration of the American population is both Polish and German. Further, these wars are connected to another amazing isometric pattern. The isometric patterning is not arbitrary, for we can see how it parallels over a period of several years contiguously. The war between the states was from 1860 to 1865, and World War II began in 1939 with Germany annexing Poland, but the actual war, World War did not begin until 1940 and ended in 1945. Look at this perfect sequencing backward and forward in time from 1902 between the years of the war between the states and the years of World War II. 
of further interest is that World War II for Germany was really over in 1944 with the invasion of Normandy and many losses through the year. Now, historians have come forth with information showing that both Germany and Japan made attempts to surrender before the end of the war, but these were ignored because the West wanted to make a show of power. This demonstration occurred in 1945 and is a part of another very curious isometric projection. In 1859, there was an electromagnetic storm that damaged telegraph infrastructure and started fires at different locations. This strange event was recorded in the Royal Society Astronomical Minutes in November 1859 and a scientist named Carrington is mentioned in the record. This has since been known as the Carrington event and heralded as an X-flare EMP, electromagnetic pulse. This was 43 years before 1902, and 43 years after 1902 is in fact 1945 when the United States created EMP events over Japan with atomic weapons at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In this video, I will not go into details, but suffice it to know that the same group of international financiers who bankrolled World War II also conspired to break the United States into different, more manageable countries in the war between the states. The Civil War was pre-planned and financed by the exact same people. The parallels here are very deep. But we're not finished. In 1858, the British Parliament altered the Oath of Allegiance to allow Lionel de Rothschild a seat at Parliament, knowing he was Jewish. This was 44 years before 1902, and 44 years after 1902 was 1946 when the Jewish-dominated United Nations begins convening in London and the Jews enjoy their retribution over German officers in the executions at the illegal Nuremberg trials. I have explained many times that these palindromic sequences are real and demonstrable, and they are everywhere in our history. This informs me that our historical record is actually programmed. The isometric parallels go on and on. In 1856, it is considered the foundation of modern Palestine established during the Crimean War. This was 46 years before 1902, and 46 years after 1902 is 1948, the official national beginning of the State of Israel. In 1848, Karl Marx, a Jew, and Engels published the Communist Manifesto, and the Industrial Revolution began. This was 54 years before 1902, and 54 years after 1902 was the year 1956, when the Hungarian people learned that the leaders of the Hungarian Communist Party were Jewish, which led to many demonstrations. The Bolshevik Jews of Russia invaded and stamped out the rebellion, and 200,000 people fled Hungary. An even more poignant pattern is found in 1841, when U.S. President Harrison is assassinated by poison. Though this history has been scrubbed, there is still researchers who claim this was murder, not pneumonia. This was 61 years before 1902, and 61 years after 1902, we have the evidence of an isometric projection that was indeed an assassination. This was 61 years after 1902, which was 1963, the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. Like I said, you can't make this stuff up, guys. History is self-referencing. Our calendars are self-referencing. It's just, you just can't make it up, guys. But we're not done. I can't believe this is three hours and 26 minutes. I still got more to show. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, let me uh, move that from studio. Let me check my little syllabus here. I don't want to miss anything. All right. Okay, if we continue, if we continue on that chart, that's all I mean. If we just continue on that chart, going, going back, listen, guys, Martinique is still the greatest volcanic disaster in the Western Hemisphere. It is also, of all time, in recorded history. It's also the greatest volcanic uh, uh, disaster since 1902 for the whole world. So 
it's not 1902, was it? This isn't this isn't a small deal. And it was three or four volcanoes and a whole bunch of underwater volcanoes all over the world that we don't know. We just have the evidence of it from different sailors and all the phenomena that was going on, all the outgassing and everything that was happening. But this is what's crazy. Martinique. You can't make this stuff up. It's in this book right here. It's in this book right here on page 61. The island of Martinique, where, where Mount Pele is, that blew up and killed all those people, 40,000-something people destroyed the island in 1902. That island was incorporated as a royal colony by the French in the year 1764. Mar Archaic's veterans already know. Why is 1764 important to 1902? because it's 138 years earlier, and it was the Phoenix year before that. Martinique, as a French royal colony, lasted 138 years before it was destroyed to a man. That is amazing. Can't, you can't make this stuff up. So, it's on page 61 of the complete story of of Martinique in St. Vincent Horrors, 1902. Can't make this stuff up. You know what you also can't make up? In 1764, astronomer Hoffman, looking through his telescope, watched an object cover and darken one-fifth of the sun's surface. He was a scientist. He couldn't be ignored. His, his report was put in the Royal Astronomical Minutes because half a million Europeans watched it go down with the naked eye. Red dust, red mud, and red rains happened all over all over the world in 1764. Things weren't just just weren't recorded as much back then. Have a lot of anomalous things that happened in 1764 and 1763. Very weird things. So uh yeah, you can't make that up. Now that chart shows 138 years now going back to, to 1764. But if you go 138 years into the future, you have Nostradamus' date of May 2040. So let me show you this. Before we get into the calendrics and Enoch and the Great Pyramid, I said I got a little bit in the Exodus. <coughs> let me show you this. This is the last, this is my last thing I'm sharing, and then I'm gonna break down these calendrics for you. They're very interesting. Share screen. Getting good at it. I'm getting good at it. All right. I'm sharing my screen. Go on present. 1902. All right. Okay. This is an old bulletin. It was published in 1764. In Philadelphia, 1764, you can see the, the date at the bottom, right there. You can't miss it, 1764. Strange phenomena seen over the sky in Germany. Multitudes of people in the open seen in an open sky, a coffin, fiery rods, three deadheads, a serpent, and a pyramid all in the sky over Germany. Oh, uh, let's see. In the month of May, 1763. Vehement lightning and thunder. This is an artist rendition of what they saw in the sky in 1763. I've got I've got a few videos on the Phoenix phenomena that show similar old not not this one but show similar old old uh, woodcuts and stuff of things that were seen too. Here's a better picture of it, right there. Published in May 1760. No, published in 1764. Observed in May of 1763. They saw hourglasses. Yeah, look at this. They saw all this in the sky. A true and wonderful narrative. And it goes off. It talks about fires being started, great swords and uh, appeared in the starry heaven. Yeah, so we have the appearance of a star. Uh, the youth were the first to notice it, killing sword. 
swords are comets. Sometimes they call comet swords. It's a lot in here. I have this. I do. I, I I have a translation of this in one of my Phoenix videos. I don't remember much about it. It's been a while since I looked at this. It was seen over Germany and Poland. Uh, sky, thunder, lightning. It happened in day and nighttime. The heaven opened itself very wide and out came marvelous things. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Yeah, it's just a four page bulletin. It's old. You can tell how old it is. Oh, yeah, it says a lot. Hey, yeah, it says houses were blown down, men, women, and children were killed. Oh, angels descended from heaven and seated themselves on the burning ground. I know that was terrifying. That almost sounds like what happened to Egypt. The destroying angels came and started smiting the people who didn't have blood over their, over their doors. Yeah, so great grievous time. I just wanted to show you guys that. Thought that was pretty interesting. Let's see. I think I'm done with that. Okay, now. Okay, you guys know that I spent, I have a whole playlist on the Great Pyramid. In that playlist, I'm showing that the reason why I don't pay a lot of attention to people who research the Great Pyramid, you guys have sent me links to videos on the Great Pyramid. I can't take any pyramid researchers seriously. If, you're, if they're going to continually ignore the anomaly that I've brought to the table, that I have discovered and found, and that is all these measurements inside the Great Pyramid are divisible by 138. And this is by the scientifically accepted measurements done by Sir Flinders Petrie that are used by Egyptologists today. Not by all the people who went in there and just did their own measurements, didn't know what they were doing. The scientifically accepted measurements are divisible by 138, and I've shown this in multitudes of videos, showing that in ancient times, there was a reason why the Phoenix, Enoch, and the Pyramid are all interrelated in literature going back thousands of years. The Great Pyramid is a three-dimensional calendar. Not one calendar, but multitudes of calendars are embedded within its measurements. So I have shown multiple in multiple videos i have shown how using the measurements of the great pyramid you arrive at the date 1902 which is the year 5796 remember we're in 5917 right now it's about in two weeks it's going to flip over to 5918 but we're in 5917 i mean this was 5796 the pyramid indicates is a very important year 1902 why is it important year why are the interior alignments of the Great Pyramid screaming to us to look at the year 1902 in the future, which is the year 5796? Well, I'm going to show you right now. This is why the Great Pyramid's interior arrangements are telling you to pay attention to 5796, which is our 1902. Because right here, the foundation of the Great Pyramid, year one, the foundation of the Great Pyramid is a countdown to the return of the chief cornerstone. 50, if 1902 is the, is the foundation, we have 203 levels of, of courses. 203 levels. I didn't, I didn't say that. Scientists say that. Many books have published how many courses go all the way up to this flat top. This flat top is like 46 feet wide and 30, 30, uh, what is it? 30, 34, 35.5 feet, 34.5 feet high. That cornerstone is too heavy for any machinery in the world to lift. If it's a solid one, one stone, it's gigantic. It's the size of a building, solid masonry. So this is 203 levels to the top. But 203, here's the math, 203 courses, if the inner dimensions of the Great Pyramid signify years in world history, and they count down to 1902, then 1902 begins the exterior going up to the top, which is a countdown. Ninth, the, the first level is 1903. The second level is 1904. The third level is 1905. Following this premise, 203 courses, levels of stone, we get to 5,999 Annus Mundi, or the year 2105 AD. Now, 
we're missing one. The one that's missing is the 6,000th year, Annus Mundi. It is the year 2106. The one that's missing is the 204th stone, the 204th level. This is the stone the builders rejected. It's never been there. They rejected it. This is the chief cornerstone. This is the stone uncut by human hands. These are all mentioned in the Bible. This is the, the 204th. This is the chief cornerstone that fulfills the monument of man and executes the exodus. How do we know? It's very simple. Take your calculator out and you will see that 204 years is 2,448 months. What is 2448? It's the number of the exodus. How do we know? Because the exodus occurred in 1447 BC. I've shown you all my biblical chronology, my secular chronology, and show you all the ancient and modern sources, all the academics, all the Jewish scholars, everybody who asserts that the exodus was in 1447 BC, which means that 1447 BC was the year 2448, Annus Mundi. 2448, 2448 is the number four, a population that makes exodus out of an evil world. In the book of Revelation, in the tribulation, the world is called Egypt and Sodom. That's what it's called. That's what it's called. So this, uh, the, the exterior of the pyramid is a countdown to the descent of the chief cornerstone that initiates the departure of those who overcome. Remember, I will make you a pillar in the temple of my God. Pyramid, the, the original word for the pyramids was pillar. They were the pillars of Egypt. They were the pillars of the border. They were the pillars of Iram. This is what they were really originally called. I will make you a pillar in the temple of to he who overcometh. I will give him a white stone in a new name. What was that white stone in a new name? It's later said to he who overcome. I will give you a white robe. Yeah, it's a whole new avatar that you cannot enjoy inside this construct. Therefore, you have to make your exodus from the construct. Because why? We're not here to save the world. It's a program. All the arithmetic of history shows it's artificial. It's a program. You're here to grow, mature, and learn. The Great Pyramid is a prophecy in stone, encoding the Phoenix phenomenon and your departure date, your exit date. Everybody else who's not a part of this monument, a part of the monument of the man who aren't sealed, they're described perfectly in the Shepherd of Hermas, in the Shepherd of Hermas text. Where in the Shepherd of Hermas of the Apocrypha, you can read and see how the, the angels are coming together to build the structure, and they're using only holy divine souls that have overcome. Everybody else is sent on about their way, but this, this awesome gate, which is called the Son of God, this new gate is erected, and only those who have overcome can pass through that gate, and they become the white stone, which is put into the monument. They're not made into a real pyramid. It's all metaphor. They're a part of the building of God. They have become a part of the divine family, which is a construction, and it belongs outside of this construct. This is where divine immortals are made. This is not where they live. That's my, that's my, that's my presentation, guys. That is the presentation on the Phoenix Phenomenon. And 1902. And of course, you'll find a whole lot more in my other videos about 1902 that I forgot to mention. But that's it. Three hours and 41 minutes. I was 41 minutes over my 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 cue. My cue. Yeah, I have videos on the Exodus. I have videos on 2448 being the numbers of number of the Exodus. The only people that I really, I really I I know, have no problem following this entire presentation of my Archaics veterans, because you've seen those videos in, in the Phoenix playlist. You already understand how all of this is already proven. Yeah, there's no supposition here. I'm not making things up to try to entertain you or try, trying to pass off some fiction as a fact. All of this is very clear, and this is why Archaics is all about, it's all about the original books.
Yeah, I saw a comment in the section there by somebody talking about he's using his cell phone on the internet to try to verify some of this. He's like, I saw the comment earlier. Said, oh, I don't know, man. This is why I listen to these things and I look on, I try to Google them, man. I'm not finding anything you're talking about. The reason you're not finding about it is because the internet was designed to control information from the beginning. And this is a subject matter of my channel. I'm always talking about that. This is why I have this library. If you're not in the old books, you'll never come across this information. Simple as that. And if you don't like to read, then you need to find somebody who does like to read or you'll never find this information. You can be on your cell phone all day long Googling stuff and you'll never be able to verify all the stuff that I'm talking about. Now, now my presentation's over. I'm hot and I'm hungry. I can't believe I just did this. Three hours and 43 minutes went by fast. Man, love you guys. Look at this one. I'm going to look at this one thing real quick, make sure I didn't forget anything. No, I got it all. I did it. Oh, one, one thing about the 204 levels I forgot to tell you about was in the Apocrypha, 2nd Esdras, concerning the last days, the priest prophet Esdras uh, was shown by holy angels. 204 books containers of knowledge they were contain the secrets of the secrets of, of scripture but to me that's just 200 that's the 204 levels of the great pyramid the great pyramid is the tree of knowledge of good and evil that's what it is yeah man so so uh i'm a i am going to share one thing for those of you who hung around i know we just lost about 200 people but that's fine thank you Paige. Thank you, everybody who donated. I didn't have a chance. I was too busy to look. I didn't have a chance to keep up with that. I, I do appreciate it. We got some raffles going off. A whole bunch of you are getting some old books. You're gonna win. We're gonna do the raffles live. But I need to show y'all one thing. Let me let me uh stop that screen. Present. Share screen. For those of you who hung around, I'm gonna show you this because it's relevant to this to this deal. What we're talking about here. Oh, my stomach just. My stomach sounded like a 1902 thunderstorm just now. All right. Let me find. I know it's in here somewhere. Looking for a chart that I've already relocated, moved somewhere else. I can, yeah, I knew I did. I knew it. I knew it. Ah, I found it. Cool. I need to be able to make sure you guys can see that. Okay, good. You can see it. Okay, look, look guys, this presentation, if anything, all it should do after, after seeing all this here is show you that 1902, we're still on schedule, guys. There's no Fomenko missing thousand years. There's no millennial reign that's already happened. All these confusing new narratives. It seems like people just want to invent things that sound really interesting, but there's nothing to back it up. That's why I don't entertain it. When it comes to chronology, I've already established 7,000 years of human history that's recorded history. I've got, I've got hundreds of data sets, over 10,000 data points. My chronicon is massive, but none of that means anything if we can't show that we're on schedule. And that's what I did for this video for, because many, many, many people have been emailing me lately talking about how can you absolutely be sure where we are in the timeline? Oh, I... I know so. I've done way too many calculations isometrically forward and backward in time in hundreds of video presentations. In my published book, I offer about 80 examples of isometric projections. But I've also done so many examples of pi and phi and curvature showing you how these ratios in history are viable and they have predictive value. I, 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 I've expended myself doing this. But when it comes to 1902, I made my case in this video. 1902 is right here on this chart. This is where we are. The reason it wasn't a big one in 1902 is I showed you the chart. Only The only real big ones that destroy the whole world are the 552 episodes. Five. Those are the Phoenix cycles, not just the 138-year ones. 1902, 1764, we have evidence of the Phoenix. 1902, we have a lot more. But in 2040, it's going to wreck shop in Asia. But 138 years after that is 2178. Mara Cakes veterans, you already know about 2178. 
that's when the simulacrum totally collapses and reboots and it goes right back to the beginning with everybody in it starting over with the Genesis Adam and Eve reset. They got to live through all these lifetimes again trying to make Exodus. Yeah, probably probably none of you listening to my voice or you wouldn't be here. Now my presentation is over, I think. Yeah, Nostradamus is some fascinating stuff, guys. Some fascinating stuff. All right, Errol, it is time to eat. It is time to eat, Errol. Thank you, man. And I'm, I, I, yeah, I'm, my stomach's still going off. Yes, sir. Let me see. Stop sharing. I need to stop. Yeah, stop sharing now. Good. All right. This was, this was a necessary video. Oh, we got some good, good more videos coming. You know me. I always got 500 videos left in me. But uh, for now, I love you guys, but I am hungry.